Some girls just want to watch World Cup. Jeff nailed another draft day. Nailed it. Top five has the 98. I got some more. Just love to some Kevin James. Fucking Kevin James. Please note that any comments, jokes, questions, maybe, anything that we say on the History of Bad Ideas is all in good fun, and remember, we insult everybody. Our thoughts, opinions, questions, anything else, actions that we do on the show do not reflect any of our employers, organizations, advertisers, or anyone else that is associated with the History of Bad Ideas. And remember, at the end of the day, it's just a joke. Welcome to the History of Bad Ideas, episode number 364. I'm Jason. I'm Jeff. I'm Blake. And I'm the intern. And we don't have Jim this week, but I'm going to have to say we upped the game because we got director to the stars, Jason C. Brown is back. Yay. Yay. Thanks for having me, guys. Love it. And and, and, uh, renowned. Hollywood softball player. Yes. That's right. <laughs> and, and you know what, Jason? It's been over a year since we talked. Um, that is crazy. It that's, is. Yeah, that's- I know. We were supposed to get in touch with him for the second half of the 2019 season of Drunk History. Yeah. But oh. something happened. I don't know. What happened? Um, COVID. It's called COVID. Yeah. <laughs> oh. uh, that's it. That's it. Sadly. Uh, <sighs> yeah, it's ra- yeah. rather rather disappointing, but we like we like talking to JCB. Yep. Glad glad he's back. Oh, yeah. You know he he his uh, <laughs> he, uh his uh, his IMDb uh, his IMDb resume keeps getting longer and longer. That's true. That's true. Uh, even that's with a six month hiatus from any work. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, I, I did enjoy your uh, Audi commercial work as second director on the uh, the commercial reenactments where the uh, uh, Amelia Clark goes into Audi and buys food for her husband. <laughs> Audi, Audi, not Audi. Yeah. And when he says Audi, he means Aldi. I, I know that there's a pronunciation topic in here somewhere. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a weekly bullet point for us. Yeah. So when did so when did you start your commercial uh, success? Uh, no commercial success. <laughs> what? Uh, very little commercial success. I, I don't do very many commercials. It's never been my thing, even when I first moved out here. Well, when I saw the Audi commercial, I said, man, that's got JCB written all over it. You mean they've been <laughs> stealing you? Your, exactly. your idea as a second director? Exactly. And the reenactments? Exactly. Oh, well. Can you send me the Daenerys uh, Targaryen wig anyway? So... Uh, the auto trader commercials that uh, that are on right now that have like the ancient Greek ones and then there's like the aristocrat ones. Mm-hmm. Yes, uh, those I've are those. those are actually directed by Derek Waters from Drunk oh. History. Uh, oh. Auto Trader brought him in to direct those those commercials just for the history part. <laughs> yep. So exactly. So it's like there's like the woolly mammoth, like the, the the reindeer sleighs or something like that. Like all those and like yeah. the odds and stuff. Like that's all Derek. So, so yeah, and the guy that needs a new cart because his wheel his wheels were square or something. That, he needed an upgrade. Yep. But but you know Derek is unfortunately available, and I, I was really sad to see. And you know, other than the fact that Jason forgot to bring you back for the second half of 2019 <laughs> uh, <laughs> drunk uh, history series back onto the podcast so we can talk to you about it. But that's OK. But I I, I, I did see where drunk history yeah. has run its course. And, and I'm wondering if uh, covid uh, basically um, yeah. expedited that, unfortunately. Yeah. The 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 sad thing for me was that we were locked and loaded. We were ready to go, and uh, three uh, we got shut down on Thursday, and Monday was supposed to be our first day of filming on season seven. Oh. So it came right on the precipice. I mean, we were completely prepped. 
we were locked and loaded. We were ready to go into production, and then we all got sent home. So for listeners that you know are new to the show, Jason C. Brown has been on several times. Yeah. Uh, he's done a lot of great stuff. He's uh, directed Imaginary Friends. Sure. Yep. yep. Uh, you were on uh, Avatar. You were an alien. Yep. Uh, you also worked <laughs> behind the scenes. <laughs> yep. Uh, Drunk History. And yep. there's many more things that we're going to talk about. You were on the pr- pilot episode of Speechless. Uh, yeah. You worked Amazing on that. Track. Amazing uh, show. <laughs> and Drunk History was what we talked about last time you were on. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which I wanted you back, and Blake told me no. Blake actually said no. <laughs> you lie. Could but the commercial. Shut up. <laughs> He's like, Jason's mine. You can't have him. And I said, it's okay. Fine. We just want him on the podcast. And so um, that was Blake's fault. <laughs> So, um, so you're out and I, I, I do want to ask you one thing. Um, I see the, the newest thing that you worked on a very yeah. special G4 holiday reunion. I did just work on that. <laughs> um, that's amazing. Yes, I did just work on that. That was, well, first of all, that's a shooting in the time of COVID. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that brought a whole new challenge and, and I got a call and it said, Hey, uh, we've got a, reunion show kind of in the style of a uh what happens next kind of real housewife style and there's going to be uh and they they mentioned they were like we're going to try and keep the crew small but the cast is considerable it's like an eight person cast uh you know one narrator and then all the people who were brought back and they said how do you think we can do this and it became the biggest, most open place possible up here in California, uh, up in Malibu. There's a place called Calamigos Ranch. And if you see the room that uh, that shot in, it's the one long Thanksgiving type table. Mm-hmm. And that room that we shot in is actually the room where they do wedding receptions. Okay. It's a really popular spot for weddings in, in LA. Uh, I've actually been to a wedding there myself and this, their giant lodge that they do wedding receptions in is where they did that. And we were able to keep things ventilated, masks at all times, face shields. When the actors showed up, we had zones to keep everybody safe. And, uh, it was pretty amazing. It really kind of went off without a hitch and it was really fun because seeing these guys come together after having not seen each other and share these stories and, see how they influenced each other was really amazing to watch. It was a lot of fun. So I was a huge G4 fan back in the oh, day. Oh, yeah. Loved it. Yeah. Uh, Morgan yeah. Webb. Yeah, me too. Morgan Mor- I remember Mor- watching that. It was amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so when I saw that, because uh, G4 is coming back. It's a video game channel. It's yes. coming back. Uh, did they ever announce how it's coming back? Is it online I, only? They, they don't know yet. Uh, I, they, they may know, but they didn't announce anything. Okay. All, all we were privy to was the we're coming back. Gotcha. Uh, so but I'm pretty excited to see what they come up with, with what the iteration is and, and how many people were involved in the in the reunion special was great because mm-hmm. even we had the main eight. But even the other hosts of other shows were doing small bits of, with it as well. Uh, it was pretty awesome. So. You said, uh, I think before we came on, uh, you have, have you, besides G4, have you worked a lot on set or is there not much there right now that's being worked on? No, the town's pretty busy right now. Um, basically the unions and the producers came together and made an agreement. Uh, the, the unions in a kind of unprecedented way, uh, came together and put out a document called the safe way forward, which was established the zones and established a uh, 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 HSS, a health safety supervisor position to be on sets and be in charge of having hand sanitizer and uh, coning off places and establishing where the zones would be. And then uh, they basically went to the studios with that document and then they negotiated a new document that would be applicable to all sets. Got so it. since that document came out, people kind of had, then had a roadmap about how we can safely go about coming back. Got so it. I was able to, um, I was able to do the G4 special. Uh, I did a commercial for like Beats or uh, JBL headphones. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, and and again, that's a sh- that was a shoot where normally you just go to a stage one actor standing in front of a green screen. 
That's, and in any normal situation, it'd be like, go stage piece of cake. Well, they didn't want to do that because of the risk of shooting indoors. So we shot basically at a parking lot on the beach, which had as much airflow as you could possibly <laughs> imagine. And it was an enormous parking lot. So everything was spaced out. Mm -hmm. So trying to, you know, put into place. And then the last thing that I just did, I just wrapped this past week an episode of NCIS Los Angeles. Uh, which airs Sundays on CBS. So that shot, uh, that's based out of Paramount uh, Studios. And I just finished an episode with them. Do you have to get a COVID test every time you go there? I was tested. So I'm uh, are the orange zone on that show, which mm -hmm. means I am in close proximity. The only people who are ever allowed to have their masks off are actors. Mm -hmm. And they are the indispensable piece of the puzzle. You can do anything anything but if you don't have the actor you've got nothing so uh for zone a that means you're in close proximity with someone who takes their mask off an actor so because of that Friday, and then uh i prepped before the thanksgiving holiday and came back after and this is a show that took off the entire week of thanksgiving so then coming back out of thanks uh i was tested the saturday after thanksgiving the monday Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm sorry, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday week, and then the following Monday, Tuesday. So it was a pretty, it was getting tested four to five times a week. Jeezel. Jeezel. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that was the crux of people going back was getting tested and making sure that people were being, being safe. Uh, in turn, uh, I think you and I could actually be the HSA, uh, HSS supervisor. I think you and I could do that on the set. I, I, I have no problem doing it at the grocery store now. So, <laughs> and he has lots I've of heard stories. <laughs> yeah, I've heard stories of HSSs who literally carry around a three foot stick and make sure that pe prod people have been there. They they walk around saying this. They visualize what it means to keep six feet of distance from people. You know that kind of stuff. So. I have no I mean, Did you say that. cattle prods? They've got cool. cattle prods? <laughs> it, it feels that way. It feels that way. <laughs> Three foot cattle prods? <laughs> that might be a good uh, <laughs> Brian, I want you Adapt to Adapt and survive. <laughs> Brian, I want you to go to the grocery store this weekend and go, You're in zone A. Get the hell away. You're in zone B. Just start yeah. telling the customers they're in different <laughs> zones. You're over there. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Just start hitting people with a broom. <laughs> <laughs> Swiffers. Swiffers. It's easy. Mask goes <laughs> over the nose, keep it, people. Keep it Cincinnati. That's right. So this yeah. is going to be different because Jason is actually going to sit with us this week. Yeah. I, I like it. I like I'm it. Excited. Yeah. So what about uh, Bruce Brothers you're working on? What's that yeah. about? Bruce, Bruce Brothers was a crazy project. Uh, Netflix, um, kind of wild on, on my part. Anyway, it was a company that I worked for in the past, and uh, I was working on something else. And actually, my dad was in town. This film last July. My dad came out for a visit. He was here for like 10 days. We had an awesome time. And then during that time, I got a call from this company that said, hey, we're in the middle of shooting this TV show called Bruce Brothers, and our first AD has just gotten this amazing opportunity to do a, an enormous job in Atlanta or something like that. So – He's leaving the show. We need someone to come in and basically finish, uh, finish out. So it, I don't even know what the schedule was. It was maybe like a five week show. And I did the last maybe like two and a half weeks. Uh, maybe it was a six week show and I did the last two and a half weeks. So I came in for the finish uh, to, uh, to, to, you know, just finish it up. Uh, and it was a great experience. It was Jeff Schaefer was the showrunner on that and Greg Schaefer's brother. Uh, and there, J Jeff is, uh, I believe, the showrunner for Kirby Enthusiasm. Um, and it was a young, really fun cast. And uh, Flula Borg's in it, who's amazing, who I worked with on a pilot long time ago. And uh, really, uh, really fun, free show. A uh, lot of fun to work on. Uh, and I was looking at that because Alan Eisenberg is in it, um, is one of the main actors. Yeah. And I, I saw the face and I was like, I know him from something. And it was uh, yeah. Orange is the New Black is what yes. I recognize him from. Yeah. So uh, he was one of the um, 
uh, secure or uh, sorry, prison guards, prison guards, prison guards. Yeah. So yeah. Was, he, he great guy, very talented. He he's going places for sure. He he was good in Orange Is New Black. Um, and then he was in Bull, but we won't talk about Bull. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, real quick, does Kevin James, when you talk to him every week, because you go out to coffee with him every week, does he still hate Hobie? Now, hold on. Hold on. JCB, I, said, I, J, JCB said as a condition of coming on this podcast, he wasn't going to answer any Kevin James questions. I, I, <laughs> Brian, I don't want the director's guilt coming after us. Brian is a huge fan of Kevin James. He's the one. And so he uh, he just wants to know if he, you know if he still hates Toby. I mean, I, I <laughs> uh, someday I will find that I will be working with him and I will wear the shirt, <laughs> and there will be photos taken. It will happen. It will happen. Uh, I've I've reached out to his people. Uh, I reached out with the Olive Ranch. Uh, he burned it. Uh, he uh, said, "Screw that guy." <laughs> And yeah. I was like, dude, I just want the zookeeper too. Just calm down. That's all I'm asking for. Okay. Calm down. <laughs> Brian, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I'm taking the high road this week. <laughs> and that's lasted 20 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes and 23 seconds. <laughs> so, oh my goodness. Uh, and it, Jason, if you want to promote anything else, you just drop it in wherever you want this week. Got it doesn't it. matter. It doesn't no. matter. Um, no. it, it, I do want to thank you because of you working. Uh, we asked you last time to try to delay Avatar sequels. Um, so we do appreciate you delaying them. So that was good. Yeah, thanks for sabotaging that. That's awesome. <laughs> there you go. How do I sabotage them? Let's put a virus out there. Let's do it. <laughs> The long play. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> hey, uh, actually, since we're asking JCB for favors, can can you yeah. uh, a- uh, ask uh, Sugarland Baird why she doesn't respond to any of my texts? Oh, I love Sugarland. She's wonderful. <laughs> she's in such a good episode of Drunk History too. I got uh, this. I got this notice from the Los Angeles Police Department. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> um, she, it's funny that the episode that she was in, which was about the. Um, Marriage Equality Act, yeah. uh, a guy that I work with just sent me a photo of his daughter, who's a senior in high school, doing a, a, a report on that subject with the Drunk History episode <laughs> in the background. That's <laughs> awesome. That was, his, that was his comedy. You won't believe it. My daughter is doing her homework with Drunk History. <laughs> so. You know, because it is, it, it, it is a reliable source of uh, historical fact. It's they always thrive for that. That was one thing that I was always so impressed with was that they did their research, you know. Yes, and alcohol. I, I'm just going and to tell you. We'll, and uh, Did you guys drink the behind the scenes people drink on the sta- on the show allegedly? Uh, no, they uh, every, no, they uh, they definitely keep it on the up and up. It's <laughs> just those yeah, two, yeah. two drunk people is <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, yeah, you, you, you know. So for so people that are listening for the first time with JCB on, you know, he, you're directing the reenactments with the actors, right? So, yeah, so he, you he, didn't get the fun part of getting drunk with people on the stories. I mean, that's no, Gary. He, 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 I he, just he get all the hard work the, off on you. I, I get to watch the uh, I get to watch the the fruits of all that labor. <laughs> um. I'm just going to tell my 10 year old just for history class, just watch drunk history, son. It's fine. Just watch that. <laughs> he didn't know what an encyclopedia set was. And he's like, uh, why would you buy that? What we did try, try the Dewey decimal system. Oh. Try explaining that. To someone. God, <laughs> this is how you look. Find a library book. Uh, <laughs> My my wife uh, worked at the library uh, recently, and uh, for for one of her uh, tests to get hired at the library was doing the Dewey Decimal, Decimal System and that. And it's really? Like, why? Why? Why are we doing this still? Well, you still have to know where to find the books. They still categorize them and shelve them by the system. It's a horrible system, Jeff. <laughs> horrible? I mean, it, it's to group like... Uh, books and and subject matter together i mean how else would you do it 
You know what? It doesn't work because my four-year-old goes in there and he just takes books and throws them everywhere. So it doesn't matter. Puts them in different locations. He doesn't throw them. So there's never, it's no way accurate. Uh, no way. So okay. you're just downplaying all the hard work the librarians do to keep the, the thing in order mm-hmm. and to, to restock books in the proper places. Yeah, I mean, your your wife did that, and now you're just telling her that her job was pointless and worthless. She's got a better job. She's fine. <laughs> well, yeah, but still, <laughs> you just said that what she was doing wasn't even worth doing. Oh, uh, you know, I, I'm just going to show. Never mind. I'll show. The sad up. part is she won't ever hear this because she don't listen. Yeah, that's right. Because I, I run the house, Jeff. I run the house. <laughs> You, you run the basement. I don't even run that, Brian. I don't even run that. You're allowed Everything to run the Everything inside the studio door you run. Yes, yes. Well, maybe. She told me where, well, to, she told me where to hang the pictures in the Bob Studios here. So. That's nice. They look good. Yeah, yeah. We got Clue. Uh, we got some other th- things here. Let me show you. Let's see. Oh. Having catch all of me, Frankenstein's a classic. Yeah. There's the pop ahead. We got. Uh, we also have a um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, air conditioning vent, and Jeff bought it, and it has a dragon coming out of it. So that's. Uh, cool. I... um, but it's on the other side of the computer. So yeah, I don't can't. feel like moving it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you'll see it. You'll see uh, your dragon again in well, maybe eight months. Maybe eight months. Hey, the vaccines have been delivered. Yeah, I saw it on the news. Yeah, yeah. Thank God. <laughs> So uh, we, can First actually, round. we can actually get back into this Bob Studios again. We've had uh, you guys have been out of this studio more than you've been in this studio since I built it. Wow. Oh, God. Yeah. So great. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, what else? Uh, real quick. Uh, we'll go around the room. Jeff, did you watch anything this week? I watched Titans season one. Oh, the DC one. DC one. How was that? In my opinion, it is the best adaptation of a DC television show that they've put out. Now, I haven't watched uh, Doom Patrol or Stargirl yet. Mm-hmm. I watch those when I'm done with Titans, but I think it's better than anything that was in the Arrowverse or any of that stuff. Better than Black Lightning? Uh, yes. <laughs> Hell, it, it's better than the DCEU movies. Wow. <laughs> So, I can see that. Well, that's not saying much, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? Uh, Zack Snyder had a director's cut of um, whatever, Justice League. Um, mm-hmm. Jason, do you have a director's cut of Imaginary Friends that's six hours long? It was a <laughs> short. <laughs> we didn't have enough time to shoot that much in our limited <laughs> schedule. There are a couple moments that hit the cutting room floor, though. So... <laughs> I think that's I think it's that way for everybody where it's those little things where it's like, oh, I'd love this to stay in, but it just doesn't flow and doesn't work. So there's always that. There's always those. Talk so they'll be on the DVD extras. The, yeah, the, with the, the commentary and all that, That's because that's how you make the real money. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to HBO Max. I'm sure yep. they're looking for things. Everyone's looking for content, guys. That's right. Everyone's looking for content. <laughs> that's right. Uh, let's see, Brian, what did you watch this week? Anything? Uh, we started a couple old, uh, Showtime shows. We started, uh, Your Honor with, uh, Brian Cranston. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, just, just the very first episode. Um, it was really good. Um, look, kind of intrigued to see where they go with it, but, um, and then we started watching, uh, The Good Lord Bird. Or yeah, the good Lord Bird with Ethan Hawke. What is that on? Um, uh, he Hawk plays. Bird, I get it. <laughs> <laughs> he plays uh, the abolitionist John Brown. Oh, okay. Yeah. It is awesome. He, like, Ethan Hawke is one of my favorite. Time. Did you see this, Jason? Uh, I have not yet, but they've got billboards for it around town, so that one's high on my list to catch. Is that a movie it or is. TV show? It's a mini series okay. on Showtime. I think it's seven episodes, and we're we're about to start five. So we've seen the first four. Mm-hmm. It is it's really good. Uh, Jason, uh, you're, you're the Hollywood insider here. 
help us out. Do you think that um, do you think it's go- Hollywood is going more towards miniseries and condensed for a series more than the long yeah. ones? Yeah, I mean the, the days of a twenty-two episode season just aren't here anymore. I mean, I think This Is Us is the only like. Mm-hmm old musty TV 22 episode show these days and even they cut back to I think 17 or something like that and the writer come, came out and said we can give you 22 that are pretty good or we can give you 17 that are great mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. It, it's just a kind of a more bang for your buck theory in in that you know it even kind of started in like the TNT model of the world like TNT and TBS were doing these short runs and ABC Family was doing these short runs, and and now everyone's just embraced it. So, um, yeah, it's kind of like get in and get out while you can because people are so fickle. <laughs> and we we've, we've talked about on the show, like um, I like I'm a huge I, I love superheroes. Obviously, most of us do on the show, but yeah. like the Flash, like you watch mm-hmm. that, and it was like the first couple seasons, like yeah, this is a really fun show, but like you could cut off five episodes and you'll be perfectly fine. Like it, it, it probably wouldn't miss much. Yeah. And it, that's yeah. What, and then you see, like, especially now, I don't know if it's because COVID and that, but it does seem like there's a lot shorter uh, runs on it. So. Yeah, I think I think that trend is here for a bit. Yeah, like Riverdale. You can cut out like 90 percent of it. And <laughs> many, it would still be. How many seasons are there in Riverdale? There are five seasons. OK, coming up. OK, you shut your whore oh. mouth. OK, I love I Riverdale. Probably, probably Whoever said let's do a live action. Yeah. <laughs> Whoever said, said let's do a live action Archie and Jughead is genius. That is so outside the box to say yes, this works. So I didn't mind the idea, and I actually started watching it. And yeah. I got through like the first eight episodes, but then they stopped. They they, they stopped paying attention to the main storyline and just started yeah. doing all the stupid side things. Te- that were terrible. They're teasing and- zombies this season. I mean, what else do you need? Come on, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Hey, I'm just impre- I'm just impressed. High school teenagers can figure out shower sex that easily. I mean, in the first <laughs> season, they were just like, "Hey, we got it." <laughs> well, you're impressed that teenagers can figure out sex? No, 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 shower sex. <laughs> Any type of sex. Come on, <laughs> that, experimentaling, experimentaling. <laughs> My favorite kind. But, <laughs> but you know, since, since they did go with the live action Archie and Jughead and crew, I, when, when you know, maybe we can j- get JCB on the live action Bazooka Joe. Oh. oh. Can anyone name a single <laughs> character outside of Bazooka Joe on that? Uh, the guy with the mask up. The mask. What's his yeah. name? Mask guy. Isn't that Bazooka Joe? Uh, turtleneck kid. <laughs> Now I'm going to look up Bazooka Joe characters. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've actually, they, they've actually like modernized a number of the characters. Uh, uh, they've actually gone through and, and uh, modernized and updated it and made it more inclusive for everybody. Uh, Mort is the guy with the, the turtleneck. Yeah, that guy. Uh, yeah. Mort. <laughs> He'd be a star in COVID-19 Hollywood. Come on. <laughs> 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 Hungry Herman, uh, Joe's tubby pal, uh, Jane is Joe's <laughs> girlfriend, and Tuffy, a streetwise type who wears a sailor hat. You are not tough with that. No offense, Blake. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course he's tough. It's in his name. Jeez. His name is Tuffy. <laughs> Uh, you know, this is how you do it, Jason. I don't know if you know this, but if you say trademark, you own the rights to this. So if you want to do oh, that, there you go. Go ahead. Um, but like, what have you watched? Um, uh, I've been too busy. I haven't been able to watch any shows. I'm and I'm still recovering from the Browns loss last night. But well, that was a good game, though. Yeah, it was. I, I, you know, for a moment there, I thought we were going to be same old Browns. And then they surprised me, and we came back. And and once we took the lead again, I'm like, a minute is too long. Yeah. <laughs> and I was right. And, and and Jackson comes out like out of a storybook, you know, Hollywood movie, you know, from the locker room, comes out fourth and five, 
And it's not that he made a great play. It was more of the Browns defenders both left the uh, tight end unguarded. They both left their man. And I was like, God, oh, man, that's the only way it can happen. Um, but, but it like, was good. Yeah, you're right. We still should have won. I mean, Cody Parkey, you know, used to kill bears. Now they're killing Browns fans. Nice now he's killing Browns fans. Uh, Jason, are you a Browns fan? No, uh, Chiefs. Oh, that's right. Because um, right. Kansas City. Morning, so, but I still follow the Bengals because a lot of the formative years were were good Bengals years, and Marvin Lewis and stuff like that. Like those years were. I I have a soft spot in my heart. One one of my first jobs in the business was I worked for NFL, uh, NFL on CBS. Mm-hmm. So Cincinnati, Ohio, was the perfect place to do that <laughs> because from Cincinnati. <laughs> Even though we never like worked with the Bengals, Cincinnati was the middle point because we could go to Indy, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, and Tennessee. Oh, that's all cool. based out of Cincinnati. So like one dude in Cincinnati had that whole region. So we used to go with him and do all the like, you know, Marcus Allen interviewing Peyton Manning stuff like that. So. Uh, and then eventually when the Bengals got good, we would actually stay home and, <laughs> and do the Bengals. Uh, uh, the Bengals do look very close to the Ch- Kansas City Chiefs. I mean, this year. I mean, this year they look pretty on par, same teams. <laughs> I will say Joe Burrow looks good. Uh, he looks really good. So I don't think. I when think his leg look- is in one piece. <laughs> when his leg is in one piece, Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, he's he's the real deal. Unfortunately, he's on the wrong team, I think. Yeah. Yeah, that's he's got he, they need a lot of parts around him. Yeah. Simmer down. He's there. exactly where he's he first. <laughs> their first five draft picks next year will just be an offensive line. I hope so. <laughs> Dear God, I hope. Uh Blake, you simmer down with your twenty seven quarterbacks in like six years, okay? You just calm down, hey, okay? You guys <laughs> complain about Andy Dalton. I would have killed for Andy Dalton's stability <laughs> in Cleveland. <laughs> I never complained about Andy and all around nice guy as well. Andy yeah. Dalton. That's right. And um, good guy. Yeah. Good old yep. Andy Dalton. Um, Jason, have you watched anything this week? Well, I actually, Blake kind of stole my answer. Cause I was saying, I've kind of been watching sports a little bit these days. Um, the only thing that I've watched, and this is not even a new show. And I don't know if anybody would even know it. It's a show. It's an Australian show. I have a good friend from Australia named Andrew Shepard, who he's out of New Orleans now. And he's talked to me about this show forever. It's called Summer Heights High. No, I don't know that. Yeah, one. there you go. So that's that was my reaction as well. I okay. Where, where, where does one watch this show? It's on YouTube. It's on YouTube, Summer Heights High. Okay. And... Uh, there, my buddy Andrew knows it. Because, uh, I know it through him because he quotes it all the time, <laughs> and it's it's one of those you just kind of have to watch it. It's one guy who plays three parts in the school. It's a high school, and he plays the drama teacher. He plays like a kind of uh, a roughneck kind of bully kind of kind of kid in the school, and he also plays a female exchange student. He plays all three parts. It is, God, I'm not doing it justice, but it is. That's a lot of range. It's crazy. It's a crazy show. Australian accents galore. Uh, Yeah. That's what I watched. On the Bobby. That's what I watched this week. It's got Uh, some reviews on, uh, uh, online. It was, it was fun. Uh, not, there's definitely some irreverent stuff that, you know, it's so cliche to say you can't get away with that today, but there's definitely some lines in there that uh, <laughs> you, you you look at and think, "Wow, what, well, you know, what, Australians do have an advanced sense of humor." So they, you know. it, it's it's good. It's sketch and it's fun and yeah, summer heights high. That's what I watched this week. It, it was in when was that originally on? Two thousand seven. Two thousand seven. But oh, okay, so it's not but, that old. But there's a second season of. <laughs> Jaime, uh, private school girl that's uh, continued uh, in 2013 for one season. There you go. She is definitely the she she is definitely the star of the show. She is she's got all the good ones. Uh, it takes place six years later. Uh, well, in real life, and it's she's making the most of her final three months of high school. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> that, that tracks. 
That's a lot right. of people go to high school for seven years. They're called doctors, <laughs> Jeff. Oh, no, that's college. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love Chris Farley. Um, I The only thing I watched, um, I watched Bombshell uh, about the Fox News sexual harassment mm-hmm. of yeah. uh, Roger Ailes. Uh, Jay Roach directed that one? Uh, did he? I think he did. Hold I think on. so. I think so. I'm going with you, yes. I'm going with you. Uh, for sure. <laughs> It was good. Um, the the actresses looked the part. Like, I, I couldn't believe it. I mean, that was Megan Kelly. Um, you know, part of me was well, like... Yeah, well, you know, Charlie Sterone, yeah. Megan Kelly, Charlie Sterone, I mean, Megan Kelly. <laughs> and it was, it was decent. Um, I, I liked it. I think um, time constraints hurt it, because I think if you put it around for a mini series. Uh, I think you could have done a lot more to it. I didn't even realize that was, uh, John Lithgow was in it. I was like, Oh my God. (laughs) Like, um, but I mean, I'm glad I saw it. I mean, I did like the, the one two minute scene they had with Geraldo. He had his sunglasses on in the newsroom still. (laughs) Um, (laughs) but, um, yeah, I I enjoyed it enough. My wife and I liked it enough. Uh, I just wish it was a little bit longer. Um, who, who Lithgow play? Uh, Roger. Roger yeah, uh, Roger. I was gonna say O'Reilly. <laughs> no, not O'Reilly. <laughs> Bill, Bill. Uh, Jay, Jay's career is really interesting because he directed Bombshell. He directed, if you haven't seen it, an amazing movie for HBO called All the Way, which is about uh, LBJ getting the Civil Rights mm-hmm. Act passed after Kennedy dies, and LBJ is played by Cranston, uh, and it's based on the stage play that Cranston did on Broadway. Yeah. It's it's an okay. unbelievable yeah. movie. And, and and the supporting cast for that, just like this one's amazing, where it's Bradley Whitford played as Herbert Hoover and Stephen Root uh is in it. Uh it's it's a it's an amazing movie. I, I I got really lucky and got a chance to work on it for a little bit. But Jay is amazing because Jay is the same director who did the Austin Powers movies. Yes. <gasps> yes. And he did Mystery Alaska, which is a very <laughs> underrated movie. Not <laughs> my top five, but it deserves maybe some honorable mention because Mystery Alaska is such a gem. That, that is again, my top five no, now. <laughs> yeah. That is a, fav- a favorite of this uh, of most people on this podcast, I would say, anyway. We so, love Mystery Alaska. So that's, I how love he got, so much. that's how he got um, Mike Myers to do a cameo, huh? Cameo, you know, exactly. Nice. Exactly. Oh, anyway, his trajectory, and he's he's a, he's a sweet man. And Jay is married to Susanna Hoffs. From the <gasps> wow. Yeah. Wow. How about that? So that's your bombshell uh, <laughs> update. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, like I said, um, that's awesome. And I'm glad you brought up Mystery Alaska because that just added to my yeah. top five now. Uh, it's such a good movie. <laughs> it really is. It's so good. Yeah. And it's good because they lost. Spoiler yeah. for a 10-year-old oh. movie. No, <laughs> oh, that is so... It's amazing. And it it, it so. actually was back when Russell Crowe cared. Uh, I mean, that's <laughs> <like, laughs> real. Russell Crowe, Burt Reynolds is so oh, good. Right. Burt Reynolds. And, and nothing will be better than the scene where Little Richard sings the next <laughs> one. And then and does then the, the Canadian... Canadian. <laughs> it, it is... And, and apparently that really happened in real life somewhere, someone like that was taken from a real life story. Oh my God. We got a favor to ask you. <laughs> it's so good. It is. That is such a good cast. Yeah. Azaria. Hank Azaria. Yeah. Oh, is that, is that that's it? Little Ford from uh, daily show. Jeez. Oh, yeah. Hank Azaria was in it. He was the boyfriend. That's right. Of the yeah, he's the guy that brought the Rangers to town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Geez, that's right. <laughs> that is such a good movie. Uh, you know what? Forget the podcast. We're just going to go watch that now. Forget it. <laughs> Everyone, <laughs> we're done. <laughs> Everyone, go watch Mystery Alaska. And yes, everyone go watch Mystery Alaska. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Uh, Brian? Speaking of Little Richard, yeah. I bet he knows how to pronounce Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? You didn't see that? Uh-uh. Like, so it it's not in nothing to do with Little Richard, but somebody <laughs> paid Smokey Robinson to do a cameo for them, mm-hmm. and it was like their the lady that they were doing it for grew up across the street from him. So like her son reached out to him and was like, "Hey, it'd be cool for my mom for Hanukkah." So he records it. 
and he pronounces Hanukkah Chanuka. <laughs> He's like, I, I don't know. I don't really know what Chanuka is. He says it three times. <laughs> there you go. Like throughout the video, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll tweet it to you because I, I, I ran across it like a couple days ago, and it's in like he's laughing because he has no idea like what it is. It's like I, well, I don't know what this Chanuka thing is, but it. <laughs> So, so he's so, so, so it's like what Jason would do if he was cameo. Right. Yeah, exactly what I would expect if I got a, uh, a a cameo from Jason. I just want to let you know Hobie has a cameo page now because after I found out Kevin from the office makes a million dollars a year on cameo. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh uh, my god. Yeah, a million dollars a year on cameo. And he is like the fifth cheapest person. He charges like 130 or 150 bucks. That guy's getting a million that, dollars last that guy's year. Getting quantity, not not quality. Yeah, <laughs> that guy. That guy's 130 for a million bucks out of 130. That guy's working for his money. It's yes, not yeah. as big then. But everyone says he like, does a he great does job today. too. Yeah, but, yeah, but, like thrilled with but what how he does. Many, how many minutes long does your cameo have to be? Is it like limited to 30 seconds? I think he, you can you can you can buy like additional like yeah. you can pretty much pay as for as long as you want it to be, but most oh, of them are like go. thirty seconds to a minute. So he charges one hundred ninety five dollars. Oh, so uh, it probably went up. <laughs> he has a nineteen hundred <laughs> yeah. reviews and with a perfect five star rating. Wow, he can get a video to you within twenty four hours according to his profile. <laughs> wow. That's pretty wild. Well, I mean, especially in the time of COVID. Yeah. I mean, he's sitting at home. Oh, here we go. We'll get another 200 bucks. <laughs> in this day and age, everybody's. One yeah. Step hey, away. I'll tell you what. Is Wallace Shawn on Cameo? Because I would pay just to make that son of a bitch say inconceivable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he is. He has to be. If you ever see the movie Southland Tales, which is the weirdest <laughs> movie. Uh, the rock, he, yeah, the, the rock, rock. Yeah, that's a weird, that's a weird cast, uh, and and no one knows what that movie's about to this day. Uh, <laughs> no clue. Uh, uh, even the people making it didn't know what it was about. Um, those are the best type of movies. Yeah, <laughs> it's so weird. Um, Wallace Shawn's in that one too, and at one point he does say "inconceivable" in that movie. <laughs> ah. uh, Michael Rappaport so, is one of the top. Yeah. So, uh, like, I was going through it once I read that article. Like, uh, Floyd, May- Floyd Mayweather's on there. He charges $1,000. Wow. Uh, I mean, he's got a lot of money. You wouldn't think he would even need that. Uh, Carol Correct. Baskin has earned $70,000 this year. Bad bitch. <laughs> that's, that's, that's next level. Uh, Mark McGrath of Sugar Ray charges $24. <laughs> for a minute. <laughs> for a minute. Sweet. There you go. Good for him. You know what? He's holding on to he's holding on to that. He's he's self-deprecating. I mean, when you name your album 1459, yeah. Because you know what 15 minutes of fame means. He's 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 a smart guy. You know what? Yeah, yeah, wasn't he hosting and something can't... on on HGTV or something too? Was it? Yeah, he or... hosts the show on uh, Sirius. Yeah, or Sirius or TMZ, yeah. I can't remember. Is that, that a Sirius on... XM? Celebrity Rock and Roll Jeopardy. He was on what? Snoop. Celebrity Snoop. Rock and Roll Jeopardy. Yeah. He kicked. You could get ass. Snoop for uh, twelve hundred. Um, that's. I'd rather have twelve hundred dollars. I might just get Mark McGrath just to do a promo for Hobie. That's all I might just do for twenty four dollars. <laughs> um, well, at this rate, let's just get Kevin from the office. <laughs> do you have two hundred dollars? <laughs> Twenty-four dollars, we could swing. You know yeah. what? I'll tell. I'll tell Mark. Especially, McGrath. especially if you do a top five about something like '90s music or something, yeah. then you can tie in Mark. I like and it. Then like you know, one hit wonders of the '90s, top five of those. Then Mark could actually like give you his top pick too. You could probably get top five out of Mark for twenty-four bucks. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Mark. That's a great. I'll be honest. I only want uh, you for thirty seconds. Can I just give you twelve bucks? <laughs> Can we just? Do that? <laughs> I don't want to twenty-four cameo negotiations. 
you can get uh, Danica McKellar for 150. Really? That'd be a nice promo. Um, Caitlyn Jenner charges 2,500 per video, and her average time is 25 seconds. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like uh, the the water guy from the fire doc fire fest documentaries is on here for seventy five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so for a hundred dollars we can get him and Mark McGrath. Okay, <laughs> this is the or new Mark Mark McGrath. <laughs> Nobody wants four Mark McGraths. No one wants four of him. <laughs> See now, now there you go. Now there's there's a good way for people to bribe us for their floppy awards. <laughs> Get us a cameo for Mark McCracken. Cameo, that's right. Um, Gary Busey, three fifty. You know uh, what? I do have to say that Jason C. Brown is up for the floppy Canadian of the year. Congratulations, Jason. I didn't know my Canadian heritage, but I'm embracing it. Um, in the history of the Canadian uh, floppy of the year, or Canadian of the year, uh, we've had that. This is our eighth one, I think. Yeah, eighth one. Um, we've had only three Canadians win it. So <laughs> you're going to be fine. All right, so I got a chance. Yes, yes. Uh, we've had Pittsburgh win it twice, two people from Pittsburgh. Uh, okay. We had somebody from Toledo, <laughs> Idaho. Uh, <laughs> so All right. It's tough competition. Well, California. Why not? Why not? So uh, those will be up on December 29th, just for listeners. We have a fall. Yeah, today. JCB, you, you don't want to win the Worsley Award. Nope. Nope. What is that about? <laughs> uh, Worsley Award is the person that dies doing the stupidest thing. Um, oh, the Darwinish yes. Awards, yes. Uh, it's named gotcha. after this, your... this douchebag that walked across Antarctica without a jacket. So uh, <laughs> He froze to death. No, no, no. Okay. Exactly. The war, the wars, the award is you know you have to die to win it. Yes. And sure. you have to die in a dumb way, but it should be a noble reason for your death. Okay. Like uh, the person good. that's named after was trying to raise money and draw attention to stuff, and he yeah. trekked across Antarctica without a jacket. With without a jacket. <laughs> Unaided across Antarctica. Jason took that to mean without a jacket. So <laughs> that's how I'm picturing it. So And then I found out three weeks later after I ripped on this guy, this poor guy for three weeks that he had wife, kids, he was in the military, so you know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's fine. And now he lives on through <laughs> this award. Yeah. And that's why he hired an intern. <laughs> Thanks. Bro. Man. Someone's got to research. Uh, Brian, why don't you do the Twitter poll of the week there, buddy? All right. Our Twitter poll of the week is what is your favorite Christmas TV special? Your choices were a Charlie Brown Christmas, Mm -hmm. the Grinch who stole Christmas, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, and Frosty the Snowman. Uh, This was way closer than I thought it was going to be, too. Yeah. Uh, coming in last <laughs> at 7% was Frosty the Snowman. Uh, coming in third at 29% was Charlie Brown Christmas. Coming in second, The Grinch Who Stole Christmas with 31%. And at 33%, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. That fucking venison meal. God dang him. Fuck that. What are you talking Rudolph. about? I voted for Rudolph. It's the best of those. There is. It's got it's got the Island of Misfit Toys. It's got Hermie. It's got Yukon Cornelius. I don't know what more you need in a Christmas. The Abominable special. Snowman. The, yeah. No, no, no. It's awful. Yeah. It's awful. I don't know how Charlie Brown Christmas is not number one in there. I mean, it's Charlie Brown Christmas. Come on. I'm not talking this because not enough people voted for it. Thanks, Brian. Thanks. You know what? Fuck this. I'm taking Mr. it to Obvious. the Supreme Court. Taking it to the Supreme Court. We're done. We're done. Stop Take the steal on this one. Take it to the Supreme Court. I think Twitter already stopped the count. So. Oh, damn it. Damn it. Uh, let's see. Ja, uh, what's your name? Blake. That's your name. Uh, you want to do listener feedback? Sure. This week's bomb listener feedback brought to you by Democrats who get elected and then win awards just for getting elected. Down the hall of the political <laughs> podcast. 
Well, he's got a point, though. <laughs> Down the hall. Down the hall. I mean, honestly, anyone named not Donald Trump would have won that award <laughs> this year. I'm surprised you're not getting Nobel or S. Or <laughs> Down the hall. <laughs> We have a political podcast next to the religious podcast. Go talk down That's there. Right. All right. We, we, as always, JCB, we start with this one guy. His name is, uh, you know. Number one fan. A-Pants. Formerly known as? Seven. Big D. Dad. Doug. Doug. <laughs> yeah. Since Hobie is on video now, when will Jason C. Brown direct an episode? <laughs> But you know what? I think we should have you direct a reenactment of one that, of our episodes. That would be fun. <laughs> I, that would do that. I, I think uh, getting you guys drunk and doing the history of Hobie. Because <laughs> then you tell how it started and how it came in. And then you got like this cast of characters like Bednar coming in and stuff like that. Like <laughs> yeah. And then, oh, yeah. Like, and then, then you get read, real you know, actors to like to pretend. play. Exactly, oh. Jeff. Yeah. I can do my own voice. I, I can act my own role because I am, you know, an impressionist. So it's fine. <laughs> I got it. Yeah, but Jason, the one thing that you don't need is your voice to act these out because they're using someone else's voice. That's true. That's true. That is. True. We you could get right. Kevin James could play Brian. I like that. <laughs> uh, you like him? I'm trying to help you out here. Uh, yeah. See. See. Now next week we, we should way. solicit. We should solicit listeners of who who would play us there in the reenactment scene. Yes. Who would play you in the reenactment of the Hobie story? I like it. I like that. Yeah. That could be really fun. I think. I think we want to put that out there. Who would you react? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Good. 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 Good stuff there, Big D. And JCB. <laughs> Please stop calling my brother Big D. That just doesn't sound right. <laughs> you mean Dallas? <laughs> That's a fun board game. <sighs> All right. <laughs> Kevin Malone won it. Well played. <laughs> And that's All right. Regarding uh, last week's top five, last week's top five, Jason, was the uh, worst list, worst twist in films, right? Yeah. So, uh, from Kevin, he's given us uh, five last Christmas, but they don't say what the worst twist was in these. He's just given us movies with the worst twist or the you know surprise ending. But number five was Last Christmas. Four was Gone Girl. Three, Now You See Me. Two, Indian Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. And number one, there was a, he hobied it. He had Signs and The Village. Uh, as much yeah, as worst I- plot twists in film. JCB, sorry, I messed uh- that up. Double, double, double Shyamalan there. Uh, yes. You know what? The Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls, it was a shitty film, but I don't think the twist was bad. Was I mean, there a twist? The aliens? Interdimensional beings? Uh, yeah, thank you. Not aliens, interdimensional yeah, beings. I don't think it was that bad of a twist. It was a shitty film, but I mean, or plot. Um, Speaking yeah. of Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. uh, in our conversation oh. of the, the newest title... Uh, what do you think the new title should be for the new Indiana Jones, Jason? That's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I was just excited to hear that Harrison is coming back for one one last one. Uh, title wise, man, it's hard to um, beat I, last yeah. day thinking that was the last one that there was ever going to be. <laughs> All right, but, uh, so we, here's but what that's, that's going to be our so top far. five. For next week, we're gonna come up with five titles for That's the next awesome. Indiana Jones movies. Do you think- so here's what we here's what we've come up with so far. Yep, uh, Indiana Jones and the Golden Dentures. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Cursed Walker. Indiana Jones, hip replacement surgery. <laughs> that sounds like a commercial. <laughs> That's not a movie. Indiana Jones and I'm Not Dead Yet. Ah. <laughs> Indiana Jones and the Lost Prostate. (laughs) Indiana Jones and the Search for Assisted Living. (laughs) I think that's my favorite one. Indiana Jones and the Temple of Incontinence. (laughs) I I have a few more, but I'm saving them for next week. (laughs) Next week. uh, I've been brainstorming these. 
Uh, do you think Indiana Jones, the next one, is just like a reenactment? Like they're just redoing the live version of Up? I mean, that's all it's got to be, right? I mean, <laughs> that's all it can be. <laughs> right? Shia LaBeouf, Shia LaBeouf will be on the, the trail with him. I mean, just come on. Oh, man. <laughs> Does Short Round come back? Oh, I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh uh, what else you got there, uh, Blake? Uh, Steve from uh, EILFM, Everything I Learned from Movies, he gave us his top five of worst plot twists in films. Uh, number five, Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls. Number four, The Happening. Oh. Number three, <laughs> Now You See Me. Number two, Contact. And number one, Interstellar. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Yeah, Contact. Wasn't that the Amy Adams sci-fi film? No, that was the Arrival. Okay, that was the Arrival. Contact was Jodie Foster. (laughs) You're right there, Blake? Same thing. (laughs) 15 years apart, but yeah, same thing. (laughs) Same thing. All right, next up from Pittsburgh Nerd, former Canadian of the Year award winner. It is. Just so you know, JCB, this is the shit you got to send in. That when was you win. Spring. That's all the Pittsburgh part of that. That's right. He said, outside of Godzilla, who's your favorite monster in the Godzilla universe? Did they have a toad or frog type monster? Get out. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like Godzilla. We get it, Jeff. Shut the hell no, up I'm and go talk about your fucking walking trees toad. down the street. I don't know what monsters they had. I, I don't want the moth. Maybe the turtle, but I thought there would be a cool toad one. Don't watch your fucking Dune series coming out next year with cacti, there, walking cacti. There is, okay, there is a the Japanese, there is a Japanese monster movie like Godzilla with a turtle that flies through space. And I think it's he rescues two little Japanese boys that are on it. I'm gonna have to look it up because it's actually okay for a Japanese monster movie. Is that like Gamora not. or something there like is that? Gamora. Gamora's yeah. in. Mothra. Everybody uh, knows Mothra. Mecha Godzilla. Yeah. That well, Mecha Godzilla. I like Mecha Strice and Rodan. Better. Rodan. Rodan. Ro- yeah, Rodan. 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 The, Ghidra. Uh, King, Ghidra. Uh, I never say it right. G- G- Ghidorah. Ghidorah. Scylla. The, the, con- the controversial answer is King Kong. Kong. Ooh. How <laughs> dare you? Godzilla universe because technically they all kind of live on skull island right i'm uh getting hbo max this friday uh just so i can watch wonder woman and godzilla the new godzilla that's all i care about i love godzilla Uh, there are far more things to care about on hbo max than that well (laughs) i I think you know what i'm excited about the documentaries i'll be honest i'm excited about that but uh yeah I, I'm, I'm going to say um, uh, I'm, I'm going to have to uh, go with uh, Mothra is probably one of my favorites. I like That's it. a generic one that everyone would go with. Uh, I just I don't know. No, he, he just likes the little miniature Japanese girls that sing that song for Mothra. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 twins. the twins. Yeah, the twins. Can, can I pick Robert Smith? Get out. Get out. <laughs> From that episode of South Park? Get out. Rob, what's me so? <laughs> All right. Uh, from uh, What Were They Thinking podcast, getting what free time on thinking? our podcast. Okay. I hope you send stuff in for them so we get free time on their podcast. I'm going Jason. to now. All right. So what wrestler, that's wrestler with a capital W, Deserves a biopic, and who would play him or her? Uh, but I guess some people answered this question, and they you did. put it in there. Brian Howell said Vin Diesel as Stone Cold Steve Austin could be interesting. And then Dr. Number One said, and we all know this, Kevin James as Jim the Anvil Neidhart. Neidhart. Yep. Neidhart. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> That's the move. That's it. That's it. Move. His Rest match at peace. WrestleMania 7 versus the Barbarian. Woo! Oh, <laughs> legendary. Legendary. Legend. Ha! Ha! The liquid toad is an irradiated toad kaiju. 
created by Toho that appears in the 1958 film. If, the, if it's Toho, that's legit. Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you that. Uh, Brian, you're a big wrestling H-Man. fan. H-Man. Hey, that's so not about there. you. <laughs> I'm taking that one. Uh, uh, Brian, who are you going with? I'm going to announced because I want to see it and then Hemsworth and the Hulk Hogan yeah um, yeah I'm interested in that uh, that's, that's a tough one uh, I'm trying to think what you could do um, I, I don't know who I'd get to be the actor but they need a Chris Benoit story uh, yeah the crippler uh, they, they need to they need to explore that warts and all how about Mark McGrath as Crippler? Chris sure. <laughs> Ryan Gosling? What, what is that? Let's see here. Hold on. Hold on. Let me get this. Chris here. Jericho. Chris Jericho. Yes. Ian Hart. <laughs> so, uh, Mark McGrath, if you did a 90 minute biopic as him as the main star, it would only cost $2,160 <laughs> for his acting ability. <laughs> That's uh, if he takes it's everything perfect in one. <laughs> uh, take. We're gonna see Brown directing. It's gonna be perfect in one take. We're doing this. Which, which I would expect. <laughs> Get Mark McGrath on the phone, Jeff. <laughs> oh, I've got the direct line to Mark McGrath. <laughs> you do, it's twenty four dollars. It can be also <laughs> All right, then uh Professor Number One and Doctor Number One says uh, who pronounced it who pronounced it Warsh? Uh, Jason with uh, epidemiologist or uh, Blake with Audi. Jeff? Uh, worst? Uh, Jason was worse. I mean, all Audi is is like missing an L where epidemiologist or whatever you said was <laughs> pretty <speech> bad. Impediment. <laughs> <laughs> That's speech impediment, people. Yeah, no, you don't. Well, I did when I was a kid. Jeez. Yeah, okay, you had a speech impediment 30 years ago. <laughs> anyway. At some point, you're going to have to get past it, Jason, I whether can. you want to or not. I can't. Uh, if only Kevin James could support me and give me a motivational <laughs> speech, speech. That's all I want. Uh, Jeff, can you give me some music for News of the Geek? Dun, 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 dun. dun. Um, news of the geek. This is uh, we're going off topic here because we have breaking news from yesterday. <laughs> breaking news from yesterday. Uh, Pornhub has removed a majority of its content, million, uh, millions of explicit videos uploaded from unverified users, as part of a series of changes following allegations that the site showed. Oh Jesus! Videos of child abuse and non-consensual sexual behavior. Well, this isn't a fun article anymore. Never mind. <laughs> you didn't read the article? <laughs> no, I just saw more of the stuff down. Oh yeah. Well, what, didn't they, they got pressure because uh, was it Visa and Mastercard were going to refuse to? Uh, yeah. To accept uh, you know any payment, payment to, to process their payments. Yeah, process payment. Yeah. Thank you. Because yeah. They because went, of the shit they were showing. They went from 13 and a half million videos down to 3 million. So, there you go. Holy moly. Um, yeah, there go, there goes Blake's free time. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yeah. 10 million videos Blake doesn't have to worry about watching <laughs> now. <laughs> um, My goal has become achievable. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I should have read that article first, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks for bumming yeah. us all Anytime. out now. Thanks, thanks, thanks. thanks. Uh, let's see here. We'll go back to the script then. Uh, per Complex, a uh, man was forced to part with his PlayStation Five last month after his wife discovered that he had lied to her about being an, an air purifier. <laughs> uh, from the Taiwan <laughs> News. Amazing. <laughs> I thought this was a hilarious story. This heartbreaking story comes out of uh, courtesy of Jin Wu who turned out to be the lucky recipient of Sony's next-gen console. He detailed his interaction on Facebook, claiming that one day after agreeing to buy a PS5 from a reseller in person, he called the individual he believed to be a man on the phone only to hear a woman pick up. After his brief conversation with the mysterious woman, Wu could uh, ascertain that she didn't know much about the PS5, but was adamant about selling it. (laughs) I don't know what it is, but I'm selling it Uh, at a low price. While he doesn't specify just how cheap she was willing to go the, to sell the PS5 digital edition, 
Uh, it usually ranges from three ninety nine to four ninety nine. Uh, when he arrived to pick up the PlayStation 5, he was greeted by a middle-aged man. <laughs> the two discussed how he was able to get his hands on such uh, the PlayStation. Quote, did you buy two? Otherwise, why are you selling it? The man respond, fell silent before coming forward with the truth, saying, my wife wants to sell it. <laughs> uh, quote, I went silent after seeing the look in his eyes. I could feel his pain wound <laughs> calls. <laughs> <laughs> he struggled to keep their suddenly awkward conversation going. Uh, it turns out the that women can tell the difference between the PS5 and an air purifier. Uh, so there you go. Uh, people have been going to drastic measures. A man named Tyler Lopez started waiting in line outside a GameStop in Dublin, California at 8 p.m. Wednesday evening and proceeded, proceeded to stay in line for 36 hours so he could be the first one to buy first person to buy one at that GameStop. And they didn't have any when they came. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are cautionary tales about that. <laughs> I, I heard, that, yeah, there were like game stops that like people were camping out line and they come out and said, we don't have any. You can camp out here all you want. We don't have any to sell you when we open the doors. People, <laughs> I, people line up out here for record store day. And one still. Uh, yeah, not not this year, but last year, and <laughs> someone lined up at 5 p.m. for the 10 a.m. releases the next day because there was only going to be one album, and I think it was a Morrissey album, and there was only a hundred made, and Amoeba, which is the big store out here, was supposed to get one copy. It didn't come in. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the entire line of 500 people were like dying inside for this poor man who waited, you know, for 17 hours. And you know what? That, walked, that's, walked away. Yeah. With, that sounds like the lyrics to a Morrissey song. Yeah, doesn't it though? It's only that's what good. Morrissey fans man, deserve anyway. <laughs> the lonely man waited at 5 Morrissey yeah. is up for the, in, uh, for the best Morris of the year floppy award. Just to let you guys know. <laughs> Yes, I can't even vote for Morrissey for that. Uh, we also have Eight best Morrissey. intern of the year. Uh, intern Hackney is in a constant. He's in a close battle with a fax machine, so it's yeah. going to be tough. It's, really, it's way too close. <laughs> hey, uh, the fax machine gives me jokes every day. So, I, <laughs> all right, Jeff. <laughs> Brian gives us jokes once a month, maybe, maybe. Oh no, he talks about Quibby. That's good. That's a good joke. Quibby. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, JCB. Did you do any Quibby work? I interviewed for a Quibby show, but I did not take it. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, how's it going with Quibby? Hey, we'd like you to do this. No, no, thanks. Subscribers to Quibby. So. <laughs> Brian was a big fan of Quibby. He was? was one. Yeah. And he hates when we tease him and make fun of Quibi, so, <gasps> so we constantly do it. <laughs> and there he goes! <laughs> nope. <laughs> Brian, that was I'm perfect, JCB. Thanks taking for the answer. Road, Brian. That was yeah. awesome. From this moment on. Uh, let's see. The Netflix ex- effect. On October 23rd, 2020, The Queen's Gambit debut on Netflix. Since then, 62 million households have watched the show. Inquiries for chess sets are now up 250% on eBay. Google search queries for how to play chess has hit an all-time high in nine years with seven people. Uh, The original novel, The Queen's Gambit, is now a New York Times bestseller 36 years after its release. And the number of new players on chess.com has grown by five times to 25 people. That is a big (laughs) number, people. We are hitting it. Uh, But yeah, Netflix uh, has caused chess to be popular again. Has anyone seen The Queen's Gambit? Yeah, I'm almost... I'm halfway through, over halfway through it, but, I, but it's been on hold for the past week and a half. Jason, you saw it, you said? Just started. Uh, I haven't gotten too far, but and likewise, I see. <coughs> I, 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 heard it, I heard it's It's good. Yeah, it is. It's really good. Didn't my kid um, if that means anything. <laughs> the other, uh, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead, sir. I was going to say the other two, like Netflix effect, as you call it, uh, mm-hmm. that are always brought up is uh, Happy Days. Uh, there's a famous episode of Happy Days 
and if you remember, right at the end of the episode, the Fonz takes out his library card. Oh, God. And it's a very famous moment where Fonzie pulls out his library card. And after that episode aired, the number of people who uh, went to public libraries and got library cards like tripled in the United States. It was something oh, insane. Wow. And the other one of those is the Mary Tyler Moore show where Mary Tyler Moore's character worked in broadcasting and the number of women who got into the field of broadcasting because of that show was exponential. It was like it it went from very few women working in that industry as a whole Mm -hmm. to opening a door for people to realize, hey, as a woman, I can do what Mary Tyler Moore does and totally influence the world, basically, in that way. Unfortunately, I encouraged Megyn Kelly, and that that kind of was the downside. That was the downside. (laughs) Sorry, sorry. Give and take. (laughs) That's right. Oh, I'm sorry, Blake. She did a really successful job on NBC. Uh, my bad. Well, yeah, that, that wasn't very good. Uh, let's see here. And this is breaking news. The, there's rumors. Oh, after please, that. please bum me out some more, Jason. No, no, Jason C. Brown is the director that they're looking towards for Universal to restart oh. Dark Universe. <laughs> Dark Universe. I, lo- I love the Universal Monsters, man. <laughs> I do, too, but you can't make an Avengers film out of this. Um, oh, you can't. Frankenstein, Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Hunchback of Notre Dame, and Invisible Man uh, were all in the works before The Mummy was released in 2017. Uh, Thanks, Tom Cruise. Yep, it uh, bombed. Uh, actors, Javier Bardem. Frazier was good. <laughs> was The Mummy any good, the new one? The, the, the Brendan Fraser one was <laughs> from 1995. Yeah, and that spawned The Rock's movie career. Ugh. The Scorpion King. Scorpion King. Uh, let's see. Uh, basically, Johnny Depp was supposed to be the Invisible Man. Russell Crowe was Dr. Jekyll. Javier Bottom was the Frankenstein's monster. Um, and basically, they never did anything except a photo shoot. Uh, it was a major embarrassment for the studio, but Bl- uh, Blue Mouse, Blumhouse. Uh, Productions is now doing something with at least some of those par- properties. Uh, their Invisible Man film came out this year and was a Highly uh, touted success. Um, yep. Let's see here. Uh, Ryan Gosling is attached to star in a new take on the Wolfman. It's got to be better than the, than Wolf. Uh, the question is, will the Dark Universe make a return? <laughs> you remember that, Jeff? <laughs> Wolf was awful. Uh, uh, let's see here. Blum uh, said, I'd love to be in charge of them. Uh, I wish I was the right person to ask. I'm just n- uh, not. They let us produce Invisible Man, and they're going to let us produce Wolfman. <laughs> Uh, but the monsters and their fate and the direction of what the monsters mean overall, that's entirely a question for Universal. Uh, Universal uh, was quoted as saying, we have monsters? What? What happened? When did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> Go talk to Jason C. Brown. He's in charge. Uh, Enjoy it at the theme park. That's where you see him. Yeah. Yeah. I love the Universal monsters, but... Me too. I just... It's not happening right now. Just stop. Oh, God. Um... Are they going to bring on the Groovy Goldies? Who? See that? The Groovy Goldies? No idea who that is. Is that with the Grape gray Ape? It was like the <laughs> Hanna-Barbera version of the monsters. There you go. <laughs> uh, and also today, uh, breaking news, Tom Cruise yelled at two cast members or crew members. I was just about to bring that <laughs> up because I just found the story. Yep, yeah. because they were not doing COVID protocols. <laughs> so he went off on Mission Impossible 7 set. Uh <laughs> So don't mess with him and COVID, and I don't blame him. So, so if Tom Cruise got the, the job uh, of being the uh, safety and health yeah. supervisor on that. <laughs> he's, 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 hey, he's we're everything. all in charge of safety. That's right. <laughs> Let's. I got the article pulled up here. It says, Cruise can be heard saying, we are the gold standard. They're back in Hollywood making movies right now because of us, because they believe in us and what we're doing. I'm on the phone with every fucking studio at night, insurance companies, producers, and they're looking at us and using us to make their movies. We are creating thousands of jobs, you motherfuckers. I don't ever want to see it again, ever. Good for him. Good for him. And that, that pretty much sums it up, too, because if they get shut down, guess what? Everybody's going to look at it and be like, hey, those guys shut down. They couldn't hold the couldn't standard. Keep it up. Yeah. yeah. Yep. They couldn't follow the protocols. There are several more paragraphs, but it's pretty much <laughs> more profanity, a lot more profanity. And 
just him telling them that, you know, if they, if they shut down, then it's not just him or them that lose their job. There's hundreds, even thousands of people who, you know, don't get a paycheck. And then he proceeded to run really fast away from the set. <laughs> run, Jeff, run. <laughs> Uh, <sighs> Jason, obviously, I don't want you saying names, obviously, for your own job protection, but have you ever yeah. been on set when an actor, a well-known actor, has just gone off on something? No, no, yeah. I've, I've been pretty lucky that, you know, the actors, you know, I, I always say 90% of the people, 99% of the people are amazing, mm-hmm. and it's 1%, but the 1% that is bad, uh, I think they're just... It's not that they like yell and scream. I think it's being inconsiderate, yeah. you know, where we're ready. We're waiting for you. Knock, knock. I told you I gave you a five minute warning. Knock, knock. We're ready for you. And you don't come out of your trailer. Yeah. I think people being inconsiderate is way more of a problem than somebody coming in and yelling and screaming, which, you know, doesn't really happen very often. We have that with Blake on our show. Blake. Time to do a show. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm out of town. What? When did this happen? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Blake, we're ready. Uh, Jeff, go ahead and hit us with your box office news real quick. Uh, box office. Oh, do I get music, Jason? Did it Give me music. Do box office. Thanks. <laughs> uh, number one at the box office this week. The Crudes made another three million dollars, a total of twenty four point two million on a sixty five million dollar budget. The Crudes colon a new age. Uh, number two, Half Brothers made four hundred and ninety thousand dollars, a total of one point four million on an unknown budget. Coming in at number three, the re-release of Elf made four hundred thousand dollars. Cumulative total of two hundred and twenty-three million on its original thirty-three million dollar budget. Jason's favorite freaky made three hundred and fifteen thousand, a total of eight point two million on a five million dollar budget. So there you go, a movie that actually got back its money at the U.S. box office. Freaky is well earned. I like that movie a lot. That is a and, what's that? That five million is a tiny budget. Yeah. Oh, it is. Which I didn't know they even made those movies anymore. Especially with James Bond. Yeah. Uh, And coming in at number five, uh, the re-release of the 2000 movie, Dr. Seuss's How the Grinch Stole Christmas, made $268,170. A $260 million cumulative total on a $123 million budget. This is the scary Jim Carrey one that my kids really do enjoy, and it kind of freaks me out. I yeah, I don't know how people like that one. I hated that version. Yeah. But you're saying the Benedict Cumberbatch one is, is pretty good. I like the animated one. I really did. Um, it's nothing like out of this world, but it, I enjoyed it. Um, better than this uh, one from 2000? Yes, yes. Times a thousand, yes. Um, upcoming December 18th of 2020, we have Monster Hunter. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Behind our world, there is another. A world of dangerous and powerful monsters where that rule their domain with deadly ferocity. Ferocity. Is this a universal monster movie? No. <laughs> For us? <laughs> Lieutenant um, it's, a, it's already been censored in China. There's an insensitive joke. Yeah. Uh, it's Paul uh, W.S. Oh. Anderson from um, uh, Resident Evil fame uh, franchise. From Mila Jovovich fame. Yep. Uh, so uh, Lieutenant Artemis and her loyal soldiers are transported from our world to the new one. And basically they have to hunt on uh, monsters. So it's a famous uh, video game or a pretty popular, uh, game, I should say. Sorry. So there you go. Oh, so that's why you get PWS Anderson to pretty much direct. Because <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, if you're doing a video game, it's him or Yui Bull. Which one do you want? <laughs> I like the Resident Evil franchise. Well, that's what I'm saying. Comparatively speaking, 
I don't know. J- Jason, do you have opinions on Yui Bull? Do you ever get to work with him? I have not. Uh, or uh, the other Paul Anderson. <laughs> Neither. I, I have not had the pleasure. Uh, what else, Jeff? Uh, we have Zombie Bro. I got that one. Hold on. Let me see here. Uh, let's see. Zombie Bro. A girl springs into action to save her parents and the rest of the town from her undead brother. Um, Who said it? Anthony Toffa, Lauren Grego, Cooper Flynn, Claudia, Claudia Pickering. It's made from 2019. It's under 90 minutes, Jeff. Oh, no. That can't be a good can't sign. Be good. <laughs> hour and 20 minutes. Live action movie under an hour and a half is never a good sign. Nope. 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 Uh, we also have Sister of the Groom. Uh, yes. Hold on. Give me that here. It is. During a destination wedding weekend, a woman and her loyal husband plan a series of embarrassing mishaps uh, to ruin the relationship between her brother and his new bride. That sounds like a terrible movie. (laughs) Uh, Amy Miller Gross, Andrew Carlberg, and Tim Harms. Oh, Tom Everett Scott is in it. Oh! Alicia Silverstone. (laughs) Oh, that was who was produced by Amy Miller Gross, Andrew Carlberg. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let me get that right. Nice one. Nice one. Details, uh, me tales. There you go. Uh, Jake Hoffman is in it, and uh, that's all I got. There you go. What else, Jeff? Do, do you think uh, to make a movie over 90 minutes, you just stretch the credits out longer? Do you think you could do it that way? Probably. I think so. Uh, Sister of the Groom is an hour and 32 minutes. Okay. That's See, perfect. they two and a half minutes more credits, and boom, yep. they got it. Yep. And, and you have to know how great Tom Everett Scott is. He is yeah. joy. He is a true joy. You know um, I mean? That thing you do is probably oh, an honorable mention for an underrated movie. Yep. <clears throat> Jeff, you love that show, that movie. Oh, yeah. You do. And, and, uh, yeah. Uh, what was that? he? He was in uh, the, the, that one TV show. Brian, what was that TV show we like? Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's my show. I did that season one. Did that? Oh, oh. I I did season one of I'm sorry. That's well, awesome. Yep. I'm a, now you're my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you that might have a vote a... for Canadian of the Year with Jeff. Yes. <laughs> such a good show, man. It's it, yeah. It's so good. Martin. Mull, Another one that got and got. Uh, F- because of COVID, they got yeah, they got exactly. the axe, and, and that that and drunk history kind of got the axe right around the same time, and uh, it, it just knife to the heart for both of those because I, I loved. I'm sorry so much. It was it was that was a joy to work on. That was so much fun. Uh, Tom Everett uh-huh. Scott was also in Twenty Seven Dresses, I think. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that I don't know. Roughly, <laughs> not not a Catherine Heigl fans. <laughs> sorry, uh, although. T- now I'm going to have to tell Nickel, you know, his past bribes were pretty good and I love him, but he didn't bring me I'm sorry. So I, I might be shifting my vote now for Canadian of the Year. Yes. <laughs> oh, well, no, no, Tom Everett Scott, he can't be that good of a guy. He was in La La Land. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I saw someone post something about that as well. So yeah, he shows up at the very end. He's uh, he's the husband. Ah. Uh. I, I never saw it. I just have to hate it. <laughs> Jason just likes making fun of it, even though he's never attempted to watch it. There you go. Uh, because we're Americans and it's in our constitutional right, right to do so. <laughs> <laughs> you have a right. Uh, what else? Jeff? Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. We also have Hunter Hunter. A fur trapper leaves his wife and daughter behind to kill a rogue wolf in the remote wilderness. Uh, but they soon become increasingly worried when a severely injured man shows up to disrupt their peace peaceful existence uh, hey is this the sequel to the gray oh god is that how it finally ended <laughs> uh, hey as i was researching our top five i saw several lists that had the gray on it wow uh if it had an ending i would have been happy i don't know i haven't seen the gray so i could uh summer Howl, uh devin sawa uh nick stall wow uh and Jada Michael. That's all I got. Uh, what else you got, Jeff? We got one more. Uh, we've got Skyline. Oh, yeah. Directed by Liam O'Donnell. 
starring Lindsay Morgan, uh, Alexander Siddig, Siddig, uh, Daniel Barnhart from the Bloodsport franchise. And the reason why this is good, hold on, this is, um, let's see here, also known as Skyline 3, if you guys remember that one, American sci-fi film. Uh, basically, when a virus threatens to turn friendly alien hybrids against humans, Captain Rose Corley and her team of elite soldiers embark on a mission to an ET extraterrestrial world to save what's left of mankind. Our good friends from Nerdly Out Loud podcast just had a, um, uh, what do you call it, Kevin Howden. He just had a, um, uh, what do you call it, a comic convention uh, breakout room, basically, with the whole cast. Uh, it was their premiere. Um, so that was, uh, that was two days ago. Oh, no, it was yesterday. I'm sorry. Uh, I was part of it. And then they had limited seat or well, limited clicks basically to get into the room. Uh, and then you could watch it on YouTube. So it was really well done. So, and the cast was fun. So there you go. So good job to check out Nerdly Out Loud for that one. Uh, so is yeah, this Scott, a, a sequel? Cause wasn't mm-hmm. there uh okay. I, I, didn't realize that they were making sequels to that movie. Uh, Skyline was Donald Faison or whatever from um, Scrubs. 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 And then they made Skyline two, Skyline 2 uh, four years ago, and then this one came out. So, um, but yeah, I think Liam O'Donnell, I think he's done all three. So I think he's written okay. all three as well. So. Cool, 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 cool. Uh, that's all I got, Jeff. That's all you got? That's all you got? Yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything else coming up other than uh, in September, uh, there's going to be a little uh, convention. That's right. Uh, Cincinnati Comic Expo, September 17th through the 19th, sponsor of, mm. sponsor of Hobie, uh, Cincinnati Convention Center, uh, Duke Energy Convention Center, isn't it? Is that what it's called? It's still called the Duke Energy okay. Convention Center. Until it gets bought out. Uh, yeah, that's true, by Hobie. Or um, turned into a hospital. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> we have a vaccine, people. The vaccine is in the country. Yes. We are going to have a fucking comic expo this year. Somehow we're going to have a fucking expo somewhere in this world. It's going to be in Cincinnati. Um, because everybody in Cincinnati listens. Uh, so it's <laughs> September 17th through the 19th. Uh, get your tickets when they go on sale, hopefully in March, uh, February or March, at CincinnatiComicExpo.com. As long as people put their fucking masks on and listen. Um, Hobie will be there. We'll be running the stage. Hello. And uh, having some trivia and uh, introducing some good panels there. So there you go. Um, Jeff, you got anything else to add about the expo? Uh, we'll be there. Oh, I know you said that. Uh, we'll be running the stage. Oh, no, you said that, too. We got tons of uh, Funko Pops to give away for gifts. Tons oh, yeah, and we've got Funko Pops to give away. Yep, yep. Uh, <laughs> There you go, right there. That's one Ooh, of them. Which one is that? Is that is that a Han Solo? Uh, that is <laughs> Young Han Solo. Uh, this is from San Diego Comic Con 2018. I don't even have a name on this one. Who is this? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, this is Star Wars. Brew Boy. We're, is it Brew we're Boy? giving away thrown out prizes from other Comic Cons <laughs> from years ago. <laughs> no, it's a collector. It's uh, Solo's girlfriend in the movie Solo. Kiara. Kiara. Yeah. Rock. Amelia Clark. Yeah. Uh, the best part is, yes. so, Solo, okay, <laughs> the collectible ones, they have Solo, Lando, Kiara, Chewbacca, and Chewbacca with goggles. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> so, huh. that's, that's how great the cast, will, the characters were, but that's okay. Uh, so, there you go. Uh, top five, Jeff, give me some music. Uh... Um, let's see. Music for top five. Play, click, 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 bling, 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 bling. Top five. Well done. That good. That good. That, that is good. Uh, Jason C. Brown, you go first with your number five and see if you take it off right. anybody's board. You go first with number five. Okay. What is, it? what is it, Jason? Oh, it's our, is our top five. five. Underrated oh, yeah. film movies. <laughs> This, yeah, this, was, this a, was requested by JCB himself. Yep, that's right. that's right. This was my request. And this was a daunting task because I am a huge movie fan <laughs> and narrowing it down to five was impossible. So I made oh. my top five. I did it by decade. 
So oh. I got one from the 60s, one from the 70s, one from the 80s, one from the 90s, and one from the 2000s. I like it. Man. Structured it that way to make it at least a little easier. Well, so the my, 2000s uh, choice should be easier because you had 20 years of movies. Exactly. I, and, and don't think I didn't use all 20 to get to get there. <laughs> and wow. then, Mine are all from the same decade. I hope, mine are too. I hope the 80s or 90s because I have so many like adjacent movies that I want to be in. So uh, my number five is from the 60s. It's from 1960. And Ooh. my number five is The Apartment by Billy Wilder. It stars Funny movie. And it stars Shirley McClain and Fred McMurray, who people know from Disney movies. And a lot of people know Billy Wilder's greats like Sunset Boulevard and stuff like that. But there is no not one bad frame in the apartment. It is a perfect movie with a perfect ending. It's got a Christmas element to it, a New Year's Eve element to it. I can go on my top Christmas movie then. Uh, it's so, so good. Ray Walston is in it, who shows up later in uh, in uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High and yeah. inspired so many great movies. Cameron Crowe is a huge fan of Billy Wilder. And if you ever watch Almost Famous, the scene where Penny Lane takes the sleeping pills and Patrick Fugit has to walk her around the room to keep her awake, that is – dead on in homage to the apartment where Shirley MacLaine's character takes sleeping pills and Jack Lemmon's character has to walk her around and keep her awake. It is, yeah. it's a magical movie. I was going to say, it, you didn't say Jack Lemmon yet, but okay. Yeah, you did. Jack, you Jack Lemmon steals the show. They did a live read of this movie uh, out in LA here about five years ago. And the live read, they had Steve Carell play the Jack Lemmon character and they had Natalie Portman play, uh, play Shirley MacLaine and it's perfect. So it's very hard for a movie that won five Oscars, including best picture to be underrated, but everyone should see this movie, the apartment. Okay. Uh, Blake number five. Well, my, my picks and explanations aren't as exciting as that, but, (laughs) but but I I just do Jason's list. (laughs) Move on. I just quit. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> All right, so I, I for for this one, I, I tried to find a a, a good uh, director that probably his films not as popular as some of the other ones that he's did. And that I'm re- I'm a big fan of uh, Richard Linklater's uh, Waking Life. And yes. he did, thank you. I got uh, I'm validated. You know? <laughs> so I love it just the, just in the fact that I I think especially if you're like in the time of COVID, this is probably a good movie to go back and watch and, and get some. Uh, meaning out of life and some deeper, you know, deeper meaning. I like it. it's it's it. Wiley Wiggins from his, uh, you know, from Days and Confused uh, <laughs> oh. is the main character in this, and basically you follow him on a surreal journey of uh, philosophy about life and dreams, and you know, just basically, uh, what's it all mean? This is the uh, animated. Some of it's animated, yes. Okay. I remember that. It's got everything, yeah. Uh, Brian, what's your number five? My number five, so Rocky I tried four? to stay between, like, what's that? Rocky IV. <laughs> it's, that's, that's not an underrated movie. That's, that's a perfectly yeah, rated totally movie. Totally overrated movie. <laughs> totally overrated. <laughs> I tried to stay between the late 90s to the late 2000s okay like before tw- before 2020 because okay. i feel like we've done this a couple of different times different ways so yes. uh just thinking of like newer ish type movies um my number five was baby driver yes love it uh, i i mean I, edgar wright is he's so good man i can't wait for the sequel for, if, hopefully it gets made but just, I mean, everything about that movie is so good. Like the, the soundtrack goes per, I mean, obviously it's built into the movie and it's part of the movie, but everything just flows together. So good. And then the cast is so good. Uh, number five for you, Jeff. Yeah, let's see mine. I will say all of these movies came out at the, from the time that I worked at the movie theater. So they're movies that, you know, I probably wouldn't have seen if I wasn't screening them at the movie theater. Uh, but these are ones that I like that tended to not do well at the box office. House Bunny? 
No, I said the ones I liked. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> uh, but my number five is The Punisher. Oh. oh. Which one? Uh, the Thomas Jane one. So, ah. Jeff, I had that, and then I realized we've done this before, like Brian said, but it's yeah. good to go back because there's so many underrated ones that we've that I was trying to remember which ones I did. I did not put the Punisher because I had that on my last one. But we didn't do this one for – it's been like – It's been a while. A long yeah, it's time. been years. Yeah, so, but that's a good one, Tom. Got to go and sit this one out, Jeff? Yeah. God's going to sit this one out. Uh, my number five is um, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, oh, the newer well, two thousand two or something like that. I really it was shorter it. than the book. What's that? <laughs> shorter than the book. <laughs> it is, it that is. it was. That's the the uh, the shit. Who was the act? Uh, Jim, Jim Caviezel. Yeah, Caviezel, Caviezel and uh, uh, Superman. Uh, Luis Guzman. Yep, Luis Guzman. I really enjoyed that film. Uh, Je- or Blake, I agree with you. I tried reading that book several times. I can't. I just it's rough. Um, it is. It's a long one. But Just yeah, stick with the three musketeers. Yep. Uh, my number four is um, Mystery Alaska uh, <laughs> that I just added. <laughs> Which <laughs> is such yeah. a great film. <laughs> I can definitely agree with that one. Well deserving. It is. It is. I, Anybody yeah. know where you can get a rub and a tug around here? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, hockey uh, in Alaska. It's awesome. Uh, Jeff, number four. Uh, my number four is uh, Down With Love. Ooh. The uh, uh, the people's names are now Ethan eluding Hawk. me. No, Ewan and McGregor. Ewan McGregor. And uh, Renee Zellweger. Yep. Yeah. Uh, it, it kind of a throwback to the 50s, you yeah. know, uh, romantic. Uh, mm-hmm. What do they call those? Uh, bedroom romps? or first screwball comedy type. Yeah. Yeah. And I thought it was a great homage to that, and it didn't seem to get anybody coming to the theater to see it. And I don't think it did anything on video sales either. Was it better than House Bunny? <laughs> Much better than House Bunny. <laughs> okay, just checking. Okay. Everything on my list is better than House better. Bunny. <laughs> <laughs> we'll uh, be the judge of that. <laughs> and I even like Anna Ferris, but <laughs> Brian, number four. Uh, number four for me, I have uh, Lawless. Oh, uh, Tom yeah. Hardy, Shia LaBeouf, Jason oh, no. Clark, Gary or, or Guy Pierce. Not Gary. I thought it was Gary Oldman, but Guy Pierce, uh, Jessica Chastain. I think that one showed up on a couple of lists I saw when yeah. I was looking up what other people thought were underrated. I, I randomly got the book uh, for Christmas, like. I think uh, the year before it came out, uh, and it was awesome. And I was I'm just the, the the next year the movie came out. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, who's uh, Blake? What's number four? All right, coming back, coming back around the horn here. Uh, number four. I I think the the more I watch this movie, the greater appreciation I have. Not just for the uh, comedy, but I've discovered that I've been doing a hell of a lot of quoting from this movie, and uh, it's got and J.C. Brown may appreciate this. this. Is probably one of the coolest scenes where they're following the race car around the track and they're flying and it's overhead with a bird's eye view, and it goes into the cockpit of the car and you're with the driver. It comes out the windshield eye on the other it's side. Talladega Nights. Shot. That's I right. Talladega Nights. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the Ballad of Ricky Bobby, and yep. I, the more I the more I watch this movie, that just the the, the more the, some of the comedy scenes in it are uh, are awesome, you know. And, and I'm always quoting that, you know, I like to picture Jesus in a tuxedo t shirt because it says I want to be formal, but I'm here to party, you know. That, 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 He's all whole... hammered, drunk in the front row. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and, and you think about it, you know, I, you know, Sasha Baron Cohen, you know, perfect formula. Uh, driver in nascar <laughs> and you know the scene where he's in the bar and he's playing jazz and everybody freaks out i was like oh am i hurting my ears <laughs> it's, like, it's for profiling purposes you know why do you have yes you know the more i think about this movie the more uh, you know the better it is and, and then basically it has a great moral story to life and, and that is you know if, if you ain't first you're last 
<laughs> oh, moral ambiguity. The call it, the hallmark of 19th century American literature. That's just stupid. I mean, you could be second or fifth, fifth or even seventh. <laughs> Hell, I was high. Uh, Jason, what is your number four? Well, I got to tell you, right out of the gate, I appreciate all your other choices because you guys are hitting the nail on the head with (laughs) things like how great soundtracks are and directors who direct great movies. And this is maybe another movie that they directed that wasn't as good. So my number four is from 1986, the BMX classic, Rad. (laughs) Wow. Okay. So this is directed by Hal Needham. Who also directed oh, Smokey Cannonball the Run and <laughs> Smokey and the Bandit? Yeah. So this is the story of a kid who's a BMX rider. The they build the Hell Track at, in his hometown. It's it's a great classic '80s. It's almost a, it almost qualifies as a sports movie. Uh, <laughs> it is a classic. I remember seeing the cover of that at the video store when I was a kid, yep. and just the yep. look of it. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, uh, great soundtrack. Well, now I have to go watch it because I never had a desire to watch this. I like oh. I don't remember when it was out, but it's a it's a good, Bart Connor Olympic athlete is his competition, and this is one of the few times that the lead actor had to change his look so that he could look like his stunt double rather than vice versa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's your number three, Jason? My number three. We are going to the nineties and nineteen ninety two. Ooh. This is a film directed by Phil Alden Robertson, Robinson, who does not ring a bell for anybody. And it is the movie Sneakers. Oh. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Good film. The other movie that Phil Alden Robinson directed. Did need Field of Dreams? Field of Dreams. Wow. Ding, 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 ding. So this is a cast of the, there are seven cast members who have either won Oscars or been nominated for Oscars. It's Robert Robert Redford, yeah. Sidney Poitier, David Strathen, Stephen Tobolowski, Ben Kingsley, River Phoenix, and Dan Aykroyd. And it yeah. is basically a precursor to what Ocean's Eleven is, where it's the heist movie and the good guys and the bad guys of the government and. It's got twists that are great. Uh, it is uh, the ensemble cast is amazing. The writing is amazing. The acting is, of course, top notch. But 1992's Sneakers is my number one hundred percent. I remember that, that VHS movie. cover too. Uh, yes, my <laughs> the voice so, yep, is my right passport. Yep. That, yeah, that's a classic cover. As soon as, as soon as I looked it up, you started talking. As soon as I looked it up, I'm like, yeah, I've seen that movie. Yep. Yep. Uh, Blake, what's your number three? Um, uh, let's see, my number three. You know, I, you guys may disagree with it, but I, I love this Keanu Reeves and Rachel Weisz uh, movie. When it came out, originally people hated it, but I, I enjoyed Constantine. You know what? When uh, I'll hop in and that movie's on, I'll stop and I'll watch it wherever it's at, whatever it's playing, whether it's the first five minutes or the last five minutes. I'll still tune into it, and I still think it's a great overall concept and a great uh, great story and cast. Uh, rumor is that they're trying to get him back for one of the next DC films, Constantine. I think that would be pretty cool if he could. I heard he was going to be in Spider-Man 3. Everyone's in Spider-Man 3. <laughs> I'm in yeah, Spider-Man 3. I play Uncle Ben, version 7. I, 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 I think Mark McGrath is in Spider-Man 3. <laughs> <laughs> they actually put him in for 90 minutes for $2,100. It's great. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> oh, poor Sugar Ray. Uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> what do you got, Brian, for number three? Uh, number three, uh, I have 310 to Yuma. Ah, yeah, I thought about that one. Great, great. The original is great, too, but that remake was awesome. Yeah. And it did not do well. Uh, in the box office, I, it did okay, that, that, but nothing that, great. That uh, was one I considered on my list. Yeah, yeah. As I, I went through my DVD three or collection, four went, movies that are just like that, and like that westernish uh-huh. genre that have been done in the, like the last ten years that I could have uh-huh. picked, but I think this one's not this is my favorite out of all of them. Not the Magnificent Seven though, with Chris Pratt. No. No. <laughs> yeah, that was disappointing. That it was rough. Good. I wanted that or, one to be good. 
Oh, I did too. Oh, but yeah. It was, well, the Ridiculous Six, though, was great. Stop it. <laughs> well, the Magnificent <laughs> Seven's being remade right now in The Mandalorian. He's getting all the guys, same character type of characters in it. So it's, Star, it's, Star, Wars, it's, Star Wars has always been Kurosawa. Yep. And you can definitely see, like, every time they add someone, the Mandalorian's adding someone this season. I'm like, son of a bitch, really? <laughs> like, okay, yeah. who's next? <laughs> Uh, and Bill Burr is awesome in it. Uh, he's hilarious. Um, number three for you, Jeff. Uh, my number three is uh, Lucky Number Slevin. Oh, yeah. Man. Is that yeah, the uh, uh, Hitman? Yeah, with yeah. Uh, Bruce Willis and uh, uh, that other guy, uh, it was a, Josh Hartnett. Yeah. Josh, Josh Hartnett. The Kansas City uh, Shuffle, is that what it's called? That, that was it, yep, the Kansas City Shuffle. You look that way while well, something else is going on over here. Uh, really liked that movie when it came out, and it never went anywhere. But although I do have it on DVD, so <laughs> I liked I gotta, it enough to get that. I got it on this. In a great play on words, lucky number Slevin. Uh, Slevin Calibria. Uh, mine's from 1998. Uh, director Joe Dante. Uh, oh, uh, Small Soldiers. Love wow. this. Oh, remember that, Jason? Sure, sure. Gremlins uh, director. Yeah, Yeah. it's a commando elite action figures uh, go against basically these. I don't know, like troll looking things. They're action figures and they come to life um, and they're in a kid's uh, room. And basically the kid gets pulled into the war um, between these two uh, warring factions of toys. And the best part is Phil Hartman's in it. Uh, Mm -hmm. with one of his classic lines while he's watching a documentary about World War II. He's like, you know, I think that's my favorite uh, favorite World War. (laughs) 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 He's sitting on the couch. I think that's my favorite one. Uh, Phil Hartman's great in it. It's just a fun show. And the best part is, so it it came out um, in 1998, and it was PG-13. And it was even told it's not a young kid's film. And my brother worked at the movie theaters at that time. And that's how I remember previewing it with him. And he would tell me the stories about how many people would come out pissed off because there was too much violence and cussing in it. It's like, well, yeah, it's a PG-13 film. What did you expect? (laughs) So um, really liked Small Soldiers. Really liked it. Um, Did not do well. Uh, And then uh, number two... Uh, this is funny because this is actually before even Jason talked about it. Uh, Kong Skull Island. Really love Kong Skull Island. Nice. Uh, the more I see it, the more I really enjoy it. <laughs> so shut it, Jeff. Shut it. I didn't say a thing. There's no toad no, said, in this one. Sound effect was perfect timing. <laughs> uh, I, I really enjoyed Kong. It was a good film. I thought it was better than Godzilla. Uh, I really enjoyed Godzilla. So... I like the mystique of the island. And Samuel L. Jackson yells. So, yeah, that's probably the selling point. Samuel L. Yeah. Jackson yelling. Uh, two for you, uh, Jeff. Is it Miss March? <laughs> no, I did not like that one. That was you and uh, our other buddy, Jason, who yeah. uh, loved that movie. Uh, uh, no, my number two is uh, King Arthur. King of the who? King <laughs> The, <laughs> I don't remember electing you, King. <laughs> no, no, different King Arthur movie. <laughs> uh, the, the one with uh, uh, God. Why are all names leaving Brett me Heimer. today? Well, yeah, he produced it. Brockheimer. Uh, no, um, Five Owen. Um, Cla- Thank you. I was going to call him Ian something. Well, Ian Griffith also was in it, too. Uh, Clive Owen, uh, Karen Knightley, My future ex-wife. Ray Winston. So... Great cast, a different take on uh, the the King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table, which is why most people don't like it, because they don't like the take on it. But Kiera Knightley was Gwendolyn in it. Guinevere. Uh, Guinevere, sorry, not Gwendolyn. Sorry, Gwendolyn. Gwendolyn. I was thinking of Spider-Man 3 already. Sorry, my bad. Uh, <laughs> she's in no, Spider-Man Wednesday 3, too. Um, but no, she's playing Guinevere, and the best part is when she's on the ice with her, with yes. her soldiers and the one guy's like, you know, there's a lot of lonely men over there. And she looked at him and she goes, don't worry, I won't let them rape you. That is the best line just because she's such a badass and she just, like, takes it, uh, her and her tribe. Um, great, good one, Jeff. I forgot about that one. I forgot about that one. It's no Miss March, but, you know. <laughs> uh, no Brian, number March two. Here. 
Uh, number two, I have Fury. The Brad Pitt? Yeah, Brad Pitt. Ball uh, Fury? Bernthal, Shia LaBeouf. Oh, is that the tank one? The tank, yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a better tank movie than Tank is. Oh, <laughs> come on, James Garner? <laughs> is it See Thomas than Howell? Girl? Is it better See than Tom Tank Girl? Girl? No, nothing's better than Tank Girl. Okay. That should be on my list. Uh, <laughs> honorable mention. Well, you you got you got a chance to change it still. Uh, no, number two for you, Blake. Or you just hobby it, just add it on. Just add it. Oh man, I I'll tell you what. I've talked about this movie before, and uh, but I don't care. I'll talk about it again because it's my <laughs> list. That's right, Harry Angel, hired by Louis Seifert to track down a singer named Johnny Favorite. But the investigation takes an unexpected and somber turn in a controversial sex scene with Lisa Bonet. It's, it's got to be Angel Heart. Angel Heart, oh, that's those right. Oh, it's Roger Rabbit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. This, well, this, this may have been on your 1980s decade list. This, maybe. this was this was definitely talked about, for yeah. sure. Dan Ger- this was Dan Gehrman's boat. Uh, actually, when I asked him, hey, what's some good underrated movies? He said Angel Heart. Isn't that the I one agree. that got her fired from Cosby Show? Yeah, she she needed to do something completely, you know, 180 degree from the Cosby show. And she did yep. literally. But uh, I you know, I love I love this part with uh, uh, Robert De Niro is Lucifer, Lucifer, basically Lewis Cipher. And he's talking about the soul and you see his like his uh, fingernails and he's peeling the uh, he's talking about the egg and the soul hard boiled egg and he's eating it. It's awesome. And now I sit there and I think about this film as I as I look back in the retrospection. Yeah, precursor to Memento, maybe just a little bit of a you know spin. You know, a guy who you know loses his memory and he turns out he's uh, actually uh, you know hunt, you know a cruel joke of basically hunting down. Well, I don't want to spoil it for people, but anyway, thirty years old. Yeah, it's only yeah, but it's underrated, old. so a lot of people haven't seen true, it yet. It's true. Yeah, so it, it's good. And this is when Mickey Rourke uh, still looked normal. Badass. And, uh, <laughs> still had, <laughs> before he took up boxing, I think, and uh, could, could, could act really well, you know. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I like this film an awful lot. It's pretty good. Uh, so, yeah, that's my number two. Listeners don't know that's actually a prequel to Iron Man 2 when he becomes uh, Whiplash. So just let you guys know. <laughs> Completely. Uh, Jason, what's your number two? My number two, uh, and, and, and in the, in the world of top five lists, I picked one based on a novel by Nick Hornsby, okay. but high not high fidelity, but not uh, the range, but not high fidelity. So 2018, a movie Ooh. came out called mm-hmm. Juliet naked and it is, uh, directed by a gay, guy named Jesse, uh, Peretz, who does a lot of TV. But it was written by it was a novel by Nick Hornsby, who did High Fidelity, and another guy named Jim Taylor, who wrote the movie Sideways. And Juliet Naked is about, you know, there's those like Beatles bootlegs where it's like the Let It Be Naked sessions. It's about an album called Juliet by a rocker who released one album and then disappeared, who is played by we talked about him earlier, Ethan Hawke. Yep. So it's Chris O'Dowd is like obsessed with the guy. He's dating Rose Byrne and Ethan Hawke is the rocker. And it's got an incredible soundtrack. It's got the exact kind of banter that you want. It was a gem that came and went. And uh, in the in the world of like high fidelity type movies, it is it is really good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Uh, Juliet Naked. Made three point like four million at the box Mark office. McGrath, uh, definitely <laughs> underrated. Uh, what's your number one? My number one. It's from the seventies, right? The from the seventies. Yeah. It's nineteen seventy six, and the movie over your left shoulder what? is Clue. <laughs> Clue did not come out in nineteen seventy six, but what did? But what did in nineteen seventy six was Murder by Death. <laughs> yep. Murder by Death, and again, this is an ensemble cast is it to end all, 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 all end all ensemble cast. It's basically exactly like Clue. So spoofs of all the great detectives of literature come to a mansion 
and there's a murder. So the host is Truman Capote. Yep. And then it's yeah. Nick and Nora Charles are Dick and Dora Charleston. And that's <laughs> David Niven and Maggie Smith. Peter Sellers plays the Charlie Chan. Peter Falk plays, instead of Sam Spade, he plays Sam Diamond. And Alec Guinness plays the blind butler. Uh, and it's written by Neil Simon. Yeah. So it is it is basically clue before clue uh, when you watch this movie. And it's got a little bit of like an airplane type spoof element to it as well. So it's clue before clue. And was it, if, if it was it? written by Neil Simon, was this uh, a stage play made into a movie? It, I, I believe it was. I believe it was. It was prior to Biloxi Blues and all those. But yeah, Canada, I mean, all I mean, it is it is amazing. Cool. Ooh, Thirty-two and a half million at the box office. That's pretty good in seventy. Wow, in seventy-six, that is huge. Pretty good, yeah. Yep, and and the cast is just incredible. Uh, let's see, Blake. What's your number one? All right, my number one, and that uh, I think you're going to agree with me, uh, Hobie Jason, because I think without the success of this major film, you know, nothing that you see today, like on Disney plus with the Mandalorian would be possible. Last year, now, I know you've had, you know, some cartoon series, all that kind of stuff in between to give people a fill until, you know, the final trilogy came out, but I want to get my number one is rogue one, a star Wars story. Mm, wow. And I say this, this is not getting the credit that it actually deserves. But I actually saw an article written about it a couple of weeks ago talking about the success of The Mandalorian and the success of Rogue One and why it's so good and why people like those who are becoming to like these a lot more than the final trilogy, you know, which we can discuss for a couple hours. But we have discussed for many yes, hours. And we have discussed it. <laughs> but, you know, with Jason, remember, when you first saw this movie, you didn't like it that much. Correct. And you you're starting to come around. Oh, because I love I it think now. You're, yeah, you're you know, and and it's because they they did they did everything right. It's in the Star Wars universe. They yep. don't mess with any of the canon. Uh, they give you familiarity where you've seen things before. So you know, um, what's what's important about this is all the characters are not connected to the main you know canon storyline. So there's a level of tense tensity. Are they going to survive? How are they? Are they going to die? You're 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 bought into their survival and the story, and it and you know that is what's great about the Mandalorian and all that kind of stuff. That that that's better than Solo because you know Solo lives. Yep. Or else he doesn't make it to a New Hope, right? <laughs> so oh my goodness, he's in this conundrum. How's he going to get out? Well, we know he lives. So and you're not bought in, you're not bought into the plot, and you don't have any concern for the main characters continuation or not but you do in this one you you get a you get you know addicted to jen or so you know you, you feel her plight you know obviously they're tapping this movie again because they're coming out with cassian yep but i don't know if that's going to be as successful because you know cassian you know his fate already they, so there's that you know problem that you're going to have but you know you know i i just think that you know the more and more i watch this and every time i watch it even more I think it's even better. It actually, you know, it actually uh, solves what's became a joke of the Death Star, you know, with the little hole that blows everything up. You know, they kind of like, hey, we're going to shoo this in a little bit here. And this is why, you know, this great engineer came up with an idea of how to make it destructible. And that's how, you know, he basically screws the empire over. And then on top of, you know, and, and then on top of that, I think it's a great bridge right into a new hope where, mm. you know, they've got Darth Vader and he's trying to get the plans and he's doing some kick ass stuff. And, and, mm. and, uh, it ends with Leia getting away and she's like, yeah, I'll give me a new hope. I, I, and the first digitization of a major character, wasn't it? They had, yep. uh, they had Tarkin and yep. they had her. And, yep. and so I, I think, I think, as time goes on, I think more and more people should love this movie for what it's worth. It's probably in my top three now between that, Empire Strikes Back, and Last Jedi. If my favorite yes. Star Wars. So, um, so I, in case you didn't know, I feel attached to that number one. Well, the, well I didn't notice. The best part is that <laughs> all the fanboys saying, oh, Jane Erso, she's a Ray's mom. She's got to be Ray's mom. Oh, no, no, she is. <laughs> 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 and 
<laughs> that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Brian, what's your number one? Rocky four. My number one Rocky is five. Copland. Stallone. Stallone. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Heavy Stallone too. Yeah. Yeah. Probably uh, the best Stallone. But you know what? Other than Rocky Four, wait. <laughs> oh. I was thinking Oscar. I was thinking Oscar might be better. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking, so, didn't he get an Oscar nomination for Copland? He did. He did. Yeah. He did. Wow. Yeah. Good choice. So he wasn't like he. They weren't thinking of him. They didn't even ask him to audition, and he wanted to do it because of like in the night like he had a run of like really shit movies like judge dread demolition man and a couple others Cobra. stop or my mom will shoot <laughs> <laughs> like I in the 90s I like demolition man it's not great but it's it's fun but he like he turned into kind of like the generic action star yeah and he was you know whatever so they he 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 gained the weight for the part before he even auditioned for it. Jesus. Wow. And then he, he showed up and he did it and he killed it. And I, it's one of, it's probably one of my all time favorite movies. The cast is ridiculous. Yeah. And it's just, you, you just didn't, I've never seen, like I never had up to that point. I hadn't seen him do anything like that. Uh, that's a good pick. Good Great choice. Good I number one. Argue, I can't argue your pick on this one, Brian. You know, I like to argue your pick. I know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jeff, this number is the first. All right, well, Brian will probably argue my pick, but okay. You say Solaris. I'm going to fucking slap you. I did not say Solaris, although I thought about it. You picked that the <laughs> last time. Don't fucking say Solaris. Well, I probably picked this one the last time, too, but I'm picking it again because, well, it's the best movie ever. Josie and the Pussycats. Oh, <laughs> Arthur Posey? <laughs> uh, is she in that one? Is that, am I thinking of the wrong person? Uh, Josie and the Pussycats. Uh, let's see. I'll get through the cast. Uh, Rachel Lee Cook, uh, Rosario Rachel Dawson, Co- Tara Reid, <clears throat> Alan Cumming, and, Parker Posey, yeah. Yeah. Missy Pyle, yeah. Carson Daly. <laughs> And Mark McGrath. <laughs> and Mark McGrath. Yeah. <laughs> he was charging oh, yeah, six dollars at that point. <laughs> <laughs> and then, then you had the guys in the band du jour with uh, uh, Seth Green and oh, yeah. uh, okay, uh, we're done with this. I can't. Yeah. Jeff, shut up. <laughs> it's a great <laughs> movie. A and the fact that you aren't even recognizing how great of a movie it is. Uh. You and know, it just didn't. Is, this is a hotly uh, debated co- uh, message on our show because every time you bring up Josie and the Pussycats, people on Twitter go nuts for this film with you. Just right. It, it and then has you just, a loyal following. A stupid I following. That. That is a following. <laughs> it is a loyal following of a great movie that people Oscar. don't can't understand how great it is. I'd rather watch House Bunny. I, I, I like following up Josie with the Pussycats with all the Spice Girls videos. <laughs> oh, I could have put Spice World on the list. <laughs> okay. agree with me that. Let's get this back to good films. 2002. <laughs> and I love this film. I don't know why. Jeff, what do you think? You're even laughing about you don't know why you like Oh, I love it. It's okay. good. It's underrated. You should watch it. The Time Machine with Guy Pierce. Yes! Wow, oh, man. Yes! You yell at me about Josie and you throw that yes, out? That's yes, the worst rendition over. of that movie. Uh, <laughs> I like this <laughs> guy Pierce, but not, a, not in the time it's machine. awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Terrible movie. It even makes Mark Addy look terrible. I mean, Stop come it. on. Stop <laughs> it. Came out March 8th, 2002. Uh, actually, I think we previewed this on my first day. <laughs> Around I just remember March 6th or whatever day we watched it. I was angry after a while. <laughs> I was angry that day, my friend. <laughs> like an old man <laughs> sending soup back at the deli. Uh, Guy Pierce, Samantha Moomba, Jeremy Irons, uh, who played the bad guy. And the best part, uh, Orlando Jones, who's awesome. Wow. So uh, He's great in the replacements. He is. 
Looks like it jacked off an elephant. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, The Time Machine. Great film. Uh, enjoyable. Kind of a short ending. I, I don't know if I would have uh, gone with that ending, but it's okay. And uh, you get to see his fiance get killed by a stagecoach every time or get mugged. Uh, there's like 37 <laughs> different ways for her to die. It's like Groundhog Day. It's sure like three, but... Yeah, it's about 37. <laughs> and that was added in because all that crap had nothing to do with the original story. The original story is like 12 pages, okay? That's why. <laughs> No, the whole point, uh, he wasn't trying to learn how to travel in time to save his girlfriend. It was for scientific curiosity, but that wasn't enough for this. Okay, fine, you get your choice. You can watch this, Time Machine, House Bunny, or, or Sound of Thunder. I'll take Sound of Thunder. Oh, dear God. Over over this? Yes. (laughs) You are a Sound of Thunder. I I don't even know what that means. Shut up. Anyway, there's your number five. Uh, honorable mentions. I had Coco, the animated Pixar film that doesn't get enough love. Oh, <laughs> I thought you meant uh, uh, Coco uh, Chanel. No. Oh. Well, yeah, uh, never mind. Okay. My brain just. Uh, Congo is what I thought you were. <laughs> I'm like, Coco. And it's like, that wasn't even the name of the gorilla. Brain. That was Amy, but. <laughs> I love Coco. Coco is probably one of my favorite Pixar films, and not enough people will talk about it. It's a good film. Uh, real quick, any other honorable mentions here? Uh, I had Jennifer's body. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah, one. Amanda Seyfried, and and uh, of course, uh, you know, it was pretty good in that movie too. I think she gets overlooked, yep. you know, just because of uh, what's her name's in it. Um, um shoot. Uh, yeah, 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 the, yeah. You know, yep. <laughs> With uh, that one lady. Any anything else? Uh, I had uh, for for sports movies. I had Miracle, uh, Miracle, Kurt, Kurt yeah. Russell, amazing, and uh, comedy. Again, again, yeah. again. Uh, co- comedies. I had Dragnet with uh, Tom Hanks and uh, Dan Aykroyd. Uh, never gets enough love, and it's a weird remake because Dragnet was a very serious yep. television show, and it got remade into this comedy. So I think people didn't know what to expect. Yeah. Or didn't appreciate it. If you watch it just as a comedy, it's very, very, very good. Uh, it is it pretty funny. I didn't appreciate it. Yeah. Do you think yeah. Was, I, I, I can't I can't look at the LA Rams new logo and think of the pagans. Yeah. <laughs> hey, exactly. Against goodness and nicety. <laughs> People yes. against goodness and normalcy. Was Dragnet <laughs> the film better than the Ethan Embry Ed O'Neill TV show remake of Dragnet? Oh yeah. Okay, oh, and fucking. I love Ed O'Neill too. I do love Ed O'Neill, but <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah. There's a lot of there's a lot of good underrated movies, guys. Oof. Brian, you got I uh, I had three. Okay. I had uh, Hell or High Water. Oh okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Death Sentence. Kevin Bacon. Bacon. Uh, where his kids uh, get his family gets murdered and. He basically hunts down the people that kill his family. The downer. It's it, yes, but it's awesome. And then uh, the other one I had wrote down was Domino. Oh, oh uh, Domino. Ridley Scott or or Tony Scott? One of the two. I don't remember which one, but I yeah. think it was Tony. I yeah, think I would guess Tony, but I'm not positive. Yeah. I think I think Tony's right. Yeah, that was a good movie. I remember it was a really it. good movie. Yeah, uh, yeah it, it was really Tony. Scott movie, though, too. Yeah. Uh, Very forgotten. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, anything? For honorable mention, I had uh, Jackie Brown. Oh. Tarantino yeah. movie that everyone seems to overlook or not pay attention to. And, yeah. uh, and I think it should be higher rated than it usually is. Uh, Holy shit. Listener Randall Holt had... Um, uh, La La Land. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> uh, Did he not have Spice World on his list? That's enough of that shit. Uh, <laughs> so there you, go. Uh, you can follow Jason at Jason C. Brown AD. So just to let you guys know. Uh, Jason, always a pleasure for coming on the show. Thanks. Thank Yay. you guys for having me. And I have to give you one hello from a different podcast, oh. the Business Over Beer podcast, which operates out of the Pacific Northwest with Jonathan Kaler, who's KY's brother. Uh, ah. 
talked Hobie on their show, and now we're talking business over beer on your show. So I wanted to make sure that uh, they sent their best to you guys. We've ta- reached out to them, and everything kind of got nuts. But we want to. Uh, we're going. We're talking about doing a crossover. I, I think that's a genius idea. Just because you guys are definitely, definitely akin. So yeah, yeah we, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, we talked about that a um, couple months ago. We gotta get th- that set up. Intern, work on that. Work on that. Yep, I'm on it. Thank you. Thank you. Inter- you know what? If you can't do it, a fax machine will. So you better fucking hurry up. Huh? Get, get your shit together, Brian. As long as Robert De Niro doesn't beat me. <laughs> right. That fucking. What about Robert Downey Jr.? What if he beats you? Uh, let's see. Bad idea of the week. Jeff, you got any bad ideas? Oh, wow. I had so much good time this week you know what? i didn't I got think one. a bad I got idea one. okay uh number 7012 uh don't let your wife sell your playstation 5 uh <laughs> i was gonna say don't Four. break covid protocols in front of tom cruise no oh, yeah. number yeah, that, that, that's a real high one there <laughs> uh let's see also make sure you watch drunk history well go back to the last season um, sure thing uh imaginary friends uh, uh. right out there on youtube that's right uh, which I really enjoyed, really did. Thank you so much. I told you last time you were on, you needed to be a TV series. I uh, I got another one. I'll send to you guys soon. Do it, do it, Rocket Power. Oh. And go back and watch season one of I'm Sorry. Yeah, damn. Yeah. I'm gonna have to go check damn. out Bruce Brothers too. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Netflix. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. Uh, Jeff, you got any titles for the show? I only wrote down one. What's that? That was Mort and Tuffy. What? Mort and Tuffy. Okay. Oh, is that from They're Bazooka members Joe? of the Bazooka Joe gang. <laughs> okay. I had uh, King of the Who. Uh, I just wrote down Mark McGrath. I don't think I want that for a title. Yeah, we <laughs> probably... I, I was wanting to put the Mark McGrath thing in there, but you say we're not allowed to use people's uh, yeah. names or something, titles, so... Mark McGrath might like it. He could jump Cameo up to $26. He probably would enjoy having our title named after him, but... Unfortunately, iTunes doesn't like it. I have stopped calling him Big D. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's all I had. Uh, Brian, help us out here. We need something. Uh, the I, only one that I wrote down was just it was just one word: experimentaling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to spell that. Let alone say. <laughs> Um, uh, and there's always uh, Josh Gad has no butthole. He it's always out there. If we I... can use it. Yep. Uh, we learned that from Artemis Fowl. Uh, <laughs> the only good thing we learned from that movie. I don't even know if it's a good thing. <laughs> Jeff, what was your pick? I had Mort and Tuffy. You know what? We're going to go with that one because uh, it does. Because we're that, that's all we have. <laughs> It's Jason C. Brown's next film. He, he trademarked I mean, it. So. I dig it. I like or we can just put, it's all we have. I feel like in this a day and age, the Bazooka Joe crowd of 90 years and older will really appreciate this. Um, they're, they're stuck at home. Uh, I think you need to do it. So uh, we're going with that. Uh, and as always, Roger says goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. You are listening to a hobby.